but I think we are developing a full artificial intelligence which will the end of the human race. It's a flying object and we don't know what it is. I would hope somebody is checking it out. I'm glad the Pentagon is looking at this, because if it poses a threat, I want them on top of it. Well, the craft generates its own gravitational field. So you said there's lights in the sky? The internet has become the command center for criminals and terrorists. That's, that's what we're instructed to say. Roswell, Area 51, alien kept deep under the ground. Welcome to Troubled Minds Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. Uh, I got a little bit of a sore throat, so you hear me scratching my throat. That's what that is. What's going on, guys? This is the show where we get together Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about, and you know what those things are. Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle, Propaganda and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. Uh, of course, this show's live. We always do this live. You can find us streaming on YouTube, Rockfin, D Live, and Twitter. And of course, we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And as always, we're taking your phone calls as we discuss amazing things, as we discuss life as we know it and life as we don't. And much more than that, of course, There's um, this, we kind of take a wide berth on this show about all the things we talk about because there's a lot of things to talk about. If you're uh, paying attention to the world around us, there are definitely, uh, let's say, um, troubling things happening in the world. And I think that's what's going on with this um, this topic tonight, which we'll get to, uh, and because we're talking about Xenobot. We're talking about artificial life. And in some cases, well, I guess we're going to have to talk about and consider what the real definition of life actually is. At some point, do we have to reconsider that and uh, really just uh, take stock of what it means to be human, which seems like. Uh, once again, it, it, like the, this is this is what we do on a daily basis here. It seems like like almost every day something new comes out, whether it's going to be the metaverse or it's going to be xenobots and reproducing and artificial life and all the rest of this stuff. It's uh, it's just wild that um, like they like the, like the saying goes, right? May you live in interesting times, and I think that's definitely part of what's going on with this because <laughs> we live in interesting times. Uh, as part of a uh, part of all this stuff, like we said when we get started tonight, uh, we are. Uh, uh, I always say I have no inside sources. I just watch the news cycles and uh, talk about things. And I have lots of fun, lots of fine friends that uh, show up and contribute to the show. And those are my inside sources, just uh, regular people, just you and me getting together, having a conversation. And that's what this is all about. So no no inside sources, no, no secret CIA, anything going on here, just uh, a conversation, just between you and me and uh, the rest of our friends. And so if you want to be part of the show tonight, 
Love to hear your thoughts on all this stuff, and you can reach us at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037, and we'll put you on the show. You can also uh, go to troubledminds.org. That's the official website, and you can click the Discord link. It's always up there right on top uh, next to the phone number. So if you don't know the number, I read it, and you're like, well, what was that number I want to call? Just go to troubledminds.org. This uh, number is right on top, and the Discord link is right on top, and you can find us easily there. Uh, made for your convenience. Okay, so the thing is, too, uh, with regarding Discord, it's a, what is it, right? A lot of people are using Discord now, and it's a, it's a new way. Uh, remember, remember Skype? You remember how Skype used to be? Skype used to be a thing, right? Uh, well, Skype is no longer, I mean, I guess it's still a thing, but it's not a good thing. Uh, basically, if you you're, you know what Skype is, um, Discord is like Skype on steroids, right? You can share, share, uh, share links, you can share photographs, you can uh, stream your video, you can share your desktop desktop in live live time you can share all kinds of stuff right it's amazing it's a chat client it's a voice client it's absolutely free and we always talk about it because it's a good program not because they sponsor us it's just um they're doing good work and i think that that's what this needs to be you know we need to highlight people who do good work and uh that's why we're doing it so if you want to join the show we're also using it to do the talk show tonight and uh if you want to be part of that again troubledminds.org click the discord link completely free as long as you have a uh, internet connection and you're in also we have another discord room running at fringe.fm slash chat and one last thing uh, download the fringe app at the uh, whatever app store you use whether that's apple or android and there we go i think that sums it up that gets us to where we need to be tonight i hope everybody's doing well happy monday and let's do it let's roll let's get to this because this is wild this is one of those ones that um it kind of happens and you you shake your head and you you know ponder your existence and that's what this is about right that's really what this show kind of is so let's uh let's begin pondering our our existence shall we Let's start with this. This is from USA Today. And there's a lot of places that reported this. I just grabbed this article because, well, uh, let's just use this one. Uh, Headline is this. Scientists made tiny xenobots out of frog cells. Now they say those robots can reproduce. What? What? (laughs) <laughs> say what say that again yeah these robots these tiny robots are actually reproducing and it was an unexpected behavior that came about we'll, we'll read some of this article as we go tonight but I, I think that the crazy part here is like i said as we begin to think about these things and consider what the future may hold i think time and again day by day it seems like we're reframing what it means to be a human being right uh, regarding consciousness, regarding is there a soul, regarding what life actually is. I think there's a lot here and a lot to talk about, and uh, that's why we do it. So, uh, well, <laughs> welcome to it. Welcome to it. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? Let's go to, uh, let's do this. Let's, let's just read a little bit of this. Uh, life finds a way. And same goes for even robots, according to a group of scientists who say the first living robotic life forms can reproduce. In January 2020, a team of scientists from the University of Vermont, Tufts University, and Harvard University took stem cells from African clawed frog embryos and formed them into tiny living creatures called xenobots. Yep. The xenobots, which are less than uh, 0.04 inches wide, were able to move on their own, communicate amongst amongst each other and heal themselves from an injury, making them the first ever living robots. And we talk about robots on this show quite often. We talk about, uh, of course, larger, ro- uh, we got a moderator in here that can maybe stop the spammer, please. I appreciate that. I'll have to, I'll have to bring the band stick if we don't uh, get this stopped. So just uh, let, let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll bust out the band stick. But okay, anyway, so the point being here is that uh, robots are one thing, right? Like we, we've talked about transhumanism on here, about adding Neuralink and, you know, uh, n- different things to the human body, right? That sort of thing going on. But there's also just a plain old basic android, all right? Just a plain old basic android, which, you know, as you put together the robot and it's like R2-D2 or whatever. Uh, but I guess, I think in terms of if you're discussing robots and sentience, um, Maybe R2-D2 is a bad example because he seems like a person, doesn't he? I think R2-D2 from Star Wars. You guys remember that little guy? He is a little, little feisty robot and whatnot and saved save the uh, Republic time and again or the Rebellion or whatever it was. Uh, so, so I don't know. I think he, he's probably a bad example. But considering that there's a whole lot of uh, things here with not just the Xenobots, but 
We're talking about robots specifically now, like actual artificial life. The weird part becomes that uh, they're now not just uh, doing whatever they're doing, they're they're uh, reproducing, right? Again, uh, pretty, pretty wild stuff here. So they were able to, again, uh, communicate amongst each other, heal themselves from an injury, and, of course, making them the first ever living robots. And what are xenobots, you may ask? We'll get to that in just a second, all the rest of this. But but I don't know. This, there's kind of a lot to this. Um, what does it mean regarding life? If we create a synthetic life form, an artificial life form that, that does not exist in nature, is that life? What is the definition of life, right? I think that uh, you have to you have to kind of, kind of like I said reframe what it means to be alive, what it means to be a person in this day and age. And this is this is a pretty wild example of a uh, of where we begin because well, what what the heck does it mean? So so the question tonight, this is what's on my mind, right? Clearly, the Xenobots. Uh, what's on my mind is this. The first question is, how do we define life? That's that's the question tonight. And of course, when we're talking about this and these tiny xenobots uh, made of frog cells and, you know, uh, being able to uh, communicate with each other, repair their own damage and all the rest of this. uh, What what about uh, does this constitute life? And if they can, uh, well, reproduce, which we're going to get to in a little bit, then at what point? Right. So they can heal their own their own damage. They can communicate with each other. They can reproduce. Um well, then it starts to bring in a conversation about consciousness, doesn't it? It starts to bring in a conversation about uh, maybe the human soul or uh, a soul ever regarding life ever. Uh, we can talk about Mary Shelley's Frankenstein or all kinds of stuff here with, uh, with basically a living thing that was not previously a living thing. And um, it, it kind of creeps me out. I mean, I think this is one of the ones where it, it kind of has to creep you out, doesn't it? I mean... I don't know. Is anybody not creeped out by this? But anyway, so, all right. So there are these Xenobots again. We'll get to exactly what they are in a little bit. But the point is that not only uh, they, they, again, 2020, January 2020 is when they created these things. And now not only uh, just after a year and a half later or so, we have this. We have, uh, but over one year later, the computer designed creatures have begun to do something that's never been observed before. What the team of scientists discovered was the xenobots would move around their environment and find single cells. They would gather hundreds of these cells at once and then assemble an offspring inside their mouth. A few days later, the offspring became a new xenobot that functioned as the others. The group published their findings in the peer-reviewed journal PNAS on Monday. Quote, this is profound. Michael Levin, director of the Allen Discovery Center at Tufts University and co-leader of the new research, said in a statement, he continued, these cells have the genome of a frog, but freed from becoming tadpoles, they use their collective intelligence, a plasticity to do something astounding. And, well, (laughs) what is that astounding thing? Of course, other than communicate with other xenobots, uh, heal their own damage when they get hurt, well, now they're reproducing. And uh, (laughs) um, pretty large implications here. If we're talking about artificial life, we're going to talk about artificial life tonight. We're going to talk about these xenobots reproducing. And, again, what does it mean? Is it time to start reframing what it means to be human as part of this discussion, what it means to actually be alive. Because uh, if we're talking about artificial life, sure, it's still, uh, you know, stem cells from frogs, but they've freed them, as they said, of being tadpoles. And so they have this other sort of inherent ability to try to survive, you know, like we've talked about Jurassic Park and that whole idea of, you know, life finds a way. Uh, Here's another bizarre example of that in that um, this is life, but it's not life that exists in the wild. This has been completely concocted in a laboratory. And these things, these xenobots are not just, again, communicating, moving around, doing their thing. They are also now reproducing. And, uh, well, I don't know. What are the implications here? And that's the question tonight. Is it time to reframe 
what being alive is. Is it time to uh, change those definitions? Because as uh, life gets more and more complicated with uh, a lot of these scientific ideas and studies, and again, like I said, transhumanism and all the rest of this stuff, uh, it's, uh, it's not as simple anymore uh, because what, what is a person? We've talked about this in the past with some of the androids and whatnot with, uh, you know, w- once we have a transhumanist future fully in, uh, implemented anyway, then then what? Uh, so if you have, you know, uh, only 40% functionality of uh, Neuralink or something to that effect, are you considered only, you know, 60% human, right? That seems absurd, doesn't it? But, well, what happens when you're more machine than man, as, uh, as Obi-Wan said about Darth Vader? It twisted and evil. I don't know. I don't know. I think there's a, a lot here to consider because, uh, well, what, what can you do? Uh, if, you know, like uh, Sophia, uh, actually, the, the first um, actual android that was made a citizen in Saudi Arabia, as a Night Stalker said, what's up, buddy? I see you out there, uh, said that she, you know, she's talking about having a baby. And so what would be the next step of that sort of thing, right? With, uh, with um, not just life at the cellular level, like we're talking about with these xenobots, but what about if life in particular, um, or life in general, can suddenly start replicating itself in larger capacities, right? And you got to think that if there's an ability, an innate something, a spark inside to defend itself, right? A spark inside of it to replicate itself, a spark inside of it to somehow communicate with others and heal its own damage. I would say short of like, you know, rolling up with the magazine and hitting the crapper uh, that, you know, and saying, hey, smoking a cigar, this thing's alive. These things are alive. You know, cue the Frankenstein's monster, you know, it's alive, it's alive. Well, you tell me. This is a little bit creepy, right? And uh, so I don't know. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? That's the question tonight. Is it time to start reframing what a human being actually is? Uh, what is what it, is it time to redefine what life actually is? Because we have these xenobots uh, as synthetic life. And not only are they doing their thing, they're also now reproducing unexpectedly. They didn't expect them to do this, but now they are. So, well... Regarding that, let's uh, let's see what let's see what these actually are. These um, let's see. All right, here we go. Let's not let's not Sophia. Here we go. All right. Now this right here. This is the actual article back in. Uh, uh, no, this is today. I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. All right, here we go. This is a uh, the this is from let's see the uh, uh, Indiana University Bloomington and conversations in science at Indiana University. And what this is, it's describing what these xenobots are meet xenobots the world's first living robots and here's why this is a little bit nuts all right uh what comes to mind when you think of machines perhaps structures made of metal plastic or ceramics what if i told you scientists have built tiny robots from frog cells that can move remember things and heal themselves yep Uh, I am talking about Xenobots 2.0, the world's first living robots, which were made using cells derived from frog embryos. They are named after the African clawed frog from which they were created, and biologists at Tufts University and computer scientists from the University of Vermont came together to develop these living robots from frog stem cells using artificial intelligence. Stem cells are specialized cells that can develop into different cell types, In the case of xenobots, the stem cells were transformed into frog skin, green, and heart cells, red. And as you can see, if you're watching the thing here, you can see how it uh, it is kind of a two-level, two-color structure of that green and the red. And the stem cells were, again, the green, the heart cells were red. And so, well, it creates these really sick versions of what life (laughs) maybe could be, maybe should be. I don't know. What makes these organisms so cool, this article continues, is that they are versatile in their structure and function. Researchers use supercomputers to model the cellular building blocks of xenobots. Imagine cells to be like Lego bricks that are used to make specific structures. Using artificial intelligence, the anatomy of the robots is generated by computers. In addition, a computer simulation is used to design the actions 
that a Xenobot is capable of. The computer then selects the de- designs that perform best in the simulations, and these blobs of cells are carved into the shapes designed by the com- computer using minute tools. These microscopic robots live in fresh water between 40 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and they consist of about 5,000 cells and are, are, are approximately 0.7 millimeters in size. Xenobots contain a preloaded source of nutrition, including proteins and fats, that can sustain them for over a week. However, in environments rich in nutrients, they can live for months. Now, this is the craziest part, right? So this is this is a little bit older. This is from October 23rd, all right? And uh, the crazy part about this is they were calling these Xenobots 2.0. And what that means is that they're able to do exactly as described, okay? But think of it this way. This is the really frightening part, I think, when you start to consider what all this, all, what all this is about. Because the AI, right, whatever was designed to create the structure of these, these beings, these entities, these xenobots, uh, actually took them and made them, you know, in such a way that they unexpectedly now started reproducing. So now the craziest part, right? So, so you got to consider that the scientists even behind this, behind the AI that was that created the AI to create these xenobots from the frog cells, from the frog DNA, they didn't consider that it was even possible for this to happen. And so as a result, you got to think the AI knew something about life and about reproduction that we have no idea about. And isn't that the terrifying question? We can add AI into the list of things to talk about tonight because, of course, these things were built in a lab, built in a computer, right? And uh, then created into these little entities, these things, whatever you want to call them, xenobots, life, artificial life. What even is artificial life? That's what's on my mind tonight. That's the topic of discussion. And what do you think? I think that's the question here. As we start to figure out what is going on in this world we live in, well, the first living robots, all right? That's fine. That seems fine, right? There's no problem here. But then, but then, unexpectedly, they start reproducing. Anybody seen uh, Stargate SG-1? Shout out to Rivers out there if you're listening. She pointed this out not too long ago on a new show we were doing when we first talked about this. Uh, very much like the replicants from Stargate SG-1. Uh, I, don't, I haven't watched past about the beginning of the fifth season, so which is like halfway through. There's 10, 10 damn seasons of that show. But, but the point is that you know if they have these entities that are alive, but right they are able to collect material around them, cells around them, and complete the reproduction process on their own. That's what they're calling Xenobots 3.0. So let me ask you then. So as always, right, we like to look at the future on this show and just consider all the possibilities. And if that's the thing, right, and we get to a certain point, well, what, what do you think a Xenobot 10.0 will be like? Or what about a Xenobot version 25. What is that about? And uh, that's what's on my mind tonight. As we consider all of this stuff, all this crazy stuff. Yeah, that's right. Scientists made tiny xenobots out of frog cells. And now they say those robots can reproduce. So what happens? What happens when these robots, again, xenobots 10.0, 25.0, what happens when xenobot reaches level 9,000, or how about 9,001? You tell me. If you get the jokes, great. If you don't, well, strike three, Michael Strange. Anyway, so as we consider this, what is life? Does this change anything about human, the human life form, the human, uh, about us being alive? What about souls? What about the rest of this? What about the spark that makes life? What is this? And apparently, why on, why on earth does this AI that created these things seem to know more about life than we do? I think that's a little creepy, a little strange, a little bit disconcerting, if you follow my meaning. And that's what's on my mind tonight. What do you think? As we consider this, these xenobots created by an AI in a computer, constructed in a lab, unexpectedly started reproducing. Does it change the definition of what life actually is? Why on earth is this AI smarter than us? And why is it creating things that are doing unexpected 
the production. You tell me. Love to hear your thoughts tonight as we consider this and talk about more. If you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. This is Troubled Minds. I'm Michael Strange. Don't go anywhere. More Xenobots than you after the break. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter. And we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And of course, we're taking your phone calls. As we talk about Xenobots and how AI created them, they were built in a lab and they unexpectedly began reproducing. What does this mean for being human, and what does this mean for the future? A Xenobot 3.0 is suddenly producing, reproducing itself. What about a Xenobot 25.0? What do you think that Xenobot will be doing? And that's what's on my mind tonight. If you want to be part of the show, 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. You can click the Discord link at troubledminds.org, and we'll put you on the show. We're watching all the Discords, all the chats out there, trying to keep up with everybody. What's going on, guys? I see you out there in, uh, over on the Fringe Discord. We got a uh, wild uh, Sonic uh, Sammy. Uh, is it Sammy? No, no. Yeah, I think so. I think Sammy. Sammy's here. No, Sonic Boom. Uh, Anyway, what's going on, guys? How's everybody? Sonic Boom. uh, Sammy. Hello, hello. All right, let's do it. We got a phone call here that's been waiting. So this is the deal, right? The question tonight is this. With these Xenobots and reproducing, what really does this mean for the future? Like I said, does it reframe what it means to be human, what it means to actually be alive? Because we have an AI now designing life, and that life is now suddenly doing unexpected things. So the unexpected things that it's doing is reproducing, which is basically the fundamental building block of keeping a life cycle going. you got to be able to reproduce, right? So, well, I mean, I guess it depends on who you ask anymore these days. But anyway, uh, uh, morbid jokes aside, uh, what is, what is the next iteration of this? What is a 4.0 or a 5.0 or a 25.0 Xenobot going to be capable of? And if they can reproduce themselves, uh, at some point, are they going to be like those replicants from a Stargate SG-1 where they not just create themselves, they start building complex pieces, right? Putting themselves together into a golem or a homunculus of sorts to do what exactly? And that's the weird part here is we don't know exactly what's going on in the, quote, brains of these Xenobots. And so that's the question tonight. That's what's on my mind. And what's exactly is going on here? Uh, if you know, we've we've considered that uh, AI has some you know ulterior motive, you know, with that old wink, wink, uh, singularity matrix style coming at us, right? Like I'm not so sure I agree 100 percent with that. But if you're actually through artificial intelligence creating a cell structure that's able to basically pull off the basic stuff that all life seems to do, then, um, well, is this alive or is this not? So we're going to get to artificial life tonight. We're going to get to the rest of that as we consider this. And uh, what does it mean? And uh, that's what's going on. Love to hear your thoughts on this tonight. 702-957-1037. Let's go to Joseph in Iowa. What's up, my friend? Welcome to the show. How are you tonight? Hey, how's it going? Uh, Doing very well. Doing of all. Uh, what do you think, man? What do you think is going on with this Xenobot stuff? Does this freak you out, or is this like, ah, come on, Mike, this is no problem. It's 2021 for crying out loud. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything kind of gets me, honestly, it's like I'm optimistic, so I look at it all positively. Like, you got Xenobots, so I look at it in a way like you. it's a good thing, you know? Like. You got possibly something that can help you out, but you know, other people might have other, or it might get out of control, but what, uh, it reminds me of is a movie transcendence by Johnny Depp or not by Johnny Depp is in it. And, uh, and, uh, and they have like at the end of it, like he eventually he merges with AI 
And at the end of it, he eventually gets to the point where he has microbots that populate the clouds. The They're just everywhere. They're in the water. They start in the water, and then they get everywhere else. And they operate off of a vibration. And they have consciousness in them. So, like... Like, let's say there was a battle, like in the movie, there was a battle and there's like solar panels getting blown up and people are going down at that same time. Those Xenobots were coming out of the ground and repairing the solar panels and repairing the people. And I think, I think that's the crazy part of this, right? So, so what would be the next iteration of that? And again, if they're smart enough to make repairs and things like this already, like maybe that is exactly what you're talking about. Maybe that's a Xenobot 25.0 and they're going to be able to not only evolve themselves, yeah, right? Like evolve themselves out of the Petri dish, but evolve themselves into the real world and uh, start problem solving, right? Built in consciousness, like you said, through, through frequency. Is that what's going on with that? Well, in the movie, yeah, like what well, you can hear in the first interaction with the AI, he gets uh, shot because he didn't, he wasn't walking away. He kept walking forward and they shoot him. And like, you can hear this and like, you can see stuff coming out of his, uh, out of the ground. And, and like, he was like, why are you afraid of this? I don't know why I remember that part, but he was like, why are you afraid of this? And it sounded like the guy before he merged with AI. That's pretty so like wild. he was in a collective consciousness at that point. Yeah, and so you got to think, right? When you get these like uh, small life like this, they they seem to be more into the uh, you know sort of like the Borg, right? Like uh, go go back to some other fiction like the Star Trek Borg, where they they don't really value an individual; they value the species surviving. And so you know, well, I guess we don't really know that because we can't ask them. But it seems like that's the case. It's more of like that hive mentality, right? Where you know, kind of like a virus, you would expect they you know it mutates to just try and c- continue. Uh, surviving right they need hosts and all the rest of this but if we're talking xenobots i mean again uh, do you think it will be possible one day for them to be able to just maybe build legs for themselves and just get up and walk out of the little petri dish i mean i that would be awesome yeah right is that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i think uh, uh <clears throat> Yeah, I don't, I don't really, I wouldn't be able to say, but uh, it seems like, like, it seems like they're, they're, the technology is there, you know, they're doing like, they're making microorganisms move and stuff in a specific way, I don't know. Yeah, pretty wild, pretty wild. Uh, what about the AI part? So so the, the creepy part about this, like one of the super creepy parts, is this wasn't actually designed by people. It was uh, generated, the, the actual cell structure of this thing and the, even the shape was picked by an AI that seemed to replicate things or, or at least create yeah, them. Yeah, because for, it would... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. It would be able to run like a simulation, like that's the same thing that happened in the movie. He turned into an AI and then the AI like almost like doubled down and then doubled down and then doubled down in intelligence as it moved on and then surpassed humans in an instant, something like that. Like, I don't know. I feel like if something like that would be possible, why isn't it already made? Yeah. Well, you know? well, uh, or uh, it, if they're just figuring this out now, exactly, like uh, like we always talk about this, right? You talk about military applications of things like this. Imagine if you had these sorts of things in a battlefield that could, as you described, maybe kind of come up out of the ground and like just repair something, right? Like kind of auto auto repairing things or uh, problem solving on the fly, right? That would that would be an incredible technology. And so w- if, if we're just discovering this now through AI, well, what has DARPA been working on? You think they've been doing stuff like this for military applications for dozens? of years at this point that's the craziest part right yeah i couldn't imagine i mean ever since a kid i always said like as long as the power's in the right hands like we're not dead yet like you know that's my thought you know because i used to have pretty 
crazy ideas. Maybe that's from TV and stuff, you know? They got us watching sci-fi since little kids, but, you know, that's that's what I always thought, as long as the power, like something, something that's running the system is, uh, I don't know, maybe it's not, Maybe it's not right. You know, I was watching a podcast the other day. I don't know. Maybe it was you where they said the pyramid should be reversed. Just inverted, turned upside down. That wasn't me. Yeah. Like, so like we have like rich people calling the shots. So Mm -hmm. we'd have a different level. The levels would be reorganized in reverse, but not completely. It would be set up differently. Yeah, that makes sense. Just a whole different social structure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, pre- pretty, pretty crazy stuff. I don't know. I, 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 where do you think this is headed? In the end, where do you think that uh, these, these Xeno, Xenobots will be in like 10 years? Do you think it will be uh, sort of like that movie you're describing? Which movie was that again, by the way, that you're referencing here? Transcendence. Transcendence. Okay. I've never seen it. But uh, so, so do you think we'll be anywhere close to that in 10 years if these things keep doing whatever they're doing? Or do you think this is just still sci-fi at this point? Uh, in 10 years, I mean, you never know. Amen to 10 that. years, you never know. Hopefully they're on other planets making a pyramid for us or whatever. Yeah, it right. Takes to... <laughs> Inverted pyramids. <laughs> Heck yes. With yeah. the, uh, the all C and I buried underground. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Joseph, you're the best. I appreciate the call. Uh, Joseph here has a YouTube channel called called Hydro Hose. Check it out, guys. I'll, I'll get that link added for you, Joseph, as well. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate the call. Yeah, Thanks for getting like started tonight. Stuff. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. I, I've been doing like raps. Okay. Uh, can you do me a favor? songs and stuff. Yeah, cool. Share, share, share those in the music thing on uh, the music file on uh, the Trouble Minds Discord. I appreciate it, bro. Thank you for the call, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Thanks, man. Have a great night. There you go. There you go. Simple as that. Uh, you dial the phone number, we'll put you on the show. That's Joseph in Iowa, and he's got a YouTube channel called a, Hy- a Hydro Hose. Check it out. Good stuff. Um, now, now, look, this is, this is the thing, right? So just to reframe again, we've got these Xenobots, all right? They were created in a cellular structure, all right, simulated to be the best form for life, all right, uh, used uh, from African frog cells, and the AI created them in such a way that they just started reproducing. They just started really, boom, came out of nowhere and started reproducing themselves by collecting stray cells and building new versions of themselves, which seems wild, right? So uh, we'll read a little bit more of this as we go, but we're talking about Xenobots tonight. We're talking about how they just really uh, are... Are they alive? Are they not alive? They don't exist in the wild. They only exist in the the laboratory as far as we're aware. But what would happen if you took these xenobots and you just let them go in the wild? Do you think after like, uh, oh, I don't know, give them a dozen years or so, they they turn themselves into things that, you know, super fast evolution style. They start collecting cells and building legs and arms and they climb out of the the water and then they start, you know, and they become like, uh, I don't know, elementals or treants or, right? They become, uh, what's his name, Uh, Treebeard from Lord of the Rings or something. I I have no idea. It seems pretty wild, but if uh, if they're actually able to to replicate themselves and they're doing it kind of using just, um, you know, generic organic cellular uh, cells they're picking up i think the weird part is that at at some point it's going to start evolving into something else won't it like they will have some sort of um life in inside of that dna that triggers them to maybe become something else that they're not and that's the craziest part about this is like kind of imagine if you if you just dumped them in a fish tank and just let them chill what would happen do you think that the population of them would die out or do you think that these xenobots themselves would evolve into something that could live longer term something that would maybe be part of a uh actual um uh maybe symbiotic organism with fish or something like this right like i have no idea and that's and that's the question tonight so so again we're talking about xenobots right we're talking about this um this uh, again a study just came out from a uh, uh, peer-reviewed study uh in the journal pnas on monday it was released and the team and scientists discovered that the xenobots would move around their environment and find single cells they would gather hundreds of these cells at once and then assemble 
an offspring inside their mouth. A few days later, the offspring became a new xenobot that functioned as the others. The group published their findings in that, in that uh, again, the journal. And this is profound, said Michael Levin. These cells have a, the genome of a frog. But freed from becoming tadpoles, they use their collective intelligence, a plasticity, to do something astounding. And what does that mean? Is that terrifying? That seems pretty, um, well, uh, this is like I say on the news show quite often. Let's file this under how could this go wrong? And uh, I, I think that's it. I think, I think given all the rest of this stuff that, uh, like I said, you know, you, if you just let it free in the wild, is this one of those things that will evolve at like a super rapid pace and turn into who knows? Like, you know, as we've done our thing, is, it, um, is this going to be, well, uh, I don't know, Jurassic Park, something like that, right? Are they going to evolve faster than, uh, than humans can? Is, are, are these things going to be our overlords? Is this how the actual singularity begins? I don't know. I don't have answers to these questions. And again, don't, don't worry. I'm not, a, I'm not a doom monger. I'm not the one that uh, is trying to tell everybody that uh, there's, you know, the, the end is nigh. I don't believe so. I think if we got ourselves into this mess, we can get ourselves out, right, regardless of what it is. But the question is, how do we even determine what the mess is if we can't really quantify it? There's some really, really weird stuff. What's up? <laughs> Night Stalker says, kill it now. That's nightmare stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Because it will. Because uh, given that it has, it seems to have, again, the properties of life. These xenobots are, again, not just repairing damage they get. They're communicating with each other. They're working as teams. And then they're now reproducing. So it seems to have some of those basic um, functions of life, you know, to, to be able to continue the species. To, And then maybe even, now here's the craziest part. If it continues and there's a, a latent in, latent intelligence kind of built into these things through its DNA structure that it's taking from these African frogs, then uh, this plasticity they're calling its intelligence is that capable of evolution? And that's the craziest part, right? That's the craziest part here, considering that if the, if these things are going to start evolving, do they evolve outside of the petri dish? Are they able to overcome whatever environment they began in and then cl- climb out of the it's not even proverbial at this point, is it? This would be the primordial soup just in a Petri dish. Are they able to evolve out of that and uh, grow some legs and just climb out? Like we were talking about the octopi the other day, right? On Thursday, we were talking about the how the octopus could climb out of its... Uh, uh, as Joseph, Joseph was just on the phone here. He said that he was in an aquarium down there in Florida, and they told him that an octopus uh, climbed out of its out of its actual uh, tank into another tank to grab a fish to bring it back and hang out with it. He wasn't trying to eat it; he just wanted to hang out <laughs> so, because they were feeding him. The octopus was fed. So pretty wild stuff, right? Is that exactly what's happening here? Meaning that these xenobots are going to have the capacity to actually not just reproduce, but maybe evolve. And so many things come to mind here, considering uh, that, again, it was, um, there you go, like Mr. Mensa says, programmed by the AI. That's the, that's the bizarre part, is that scientists aren't exactly sure uh, how it learned to do these things, how life just kind of learns to replicate itself, how life learns to survive. And uh, as that Jurassic Park saying goes, right, life finds a way. And so the question is then, uh, how do we classify this? Is this life, these xenobots created by an AI and then built in a lab in a Petri dish that uh, suddenly just started replicating themselves, actually reproducing? Uh, it brings to mind uh, the homunculus, the golem, right? It's something that uh, is sort of without form and then begins uh, to become sentient somehow. Does it need itself and some experience or does it need us? to, uh, I don't know, maybe magically put a, a soul into it, uh, into the container, as it were. I don't know. I think that's that's a lot of the, the stuff here, including, right, what happens when this, uh, again, goes to the next level, to the level beyond that? Well, you know, we've talked about Sophia, that android that um, said that she wants to have a baby, right? Sophia. Let's get to Sophia, actually. Here you go. So speaking of Sophia, now this is the weird part, right? This is from uh, futurism.com, and that is actually from a while ago. But uh, this is actually uh, November 11th, 2019 when this happened. But if you guys remember Sophia the robot, let's look at this, right? And this has got me thinking in terms of this artificial life business, all right? And what this means for not just xenobots, but what about, again, artificial life forms like 
Sophia. Sophia the robot says she doesn't have sex. Confusing creators. Uh, yep, here we go. So last week, again, this is from uh, November of 2019. Last week, world famous robot Sophia shared with the crowd at the 2019 Web Summit that she, or it, or whatever, doesn't have sex. Yep. And, uh, yep, there you go. In case you missed it, someone asked Sophia last week whether it had ever been in love or was even capable of doing so. According to Punley, Sophia went off script. Many of the robot's conversations are at least partially written out in advance. See, I told you. It's not real AI. But when it responded, no, I don't do sexual activities. All right, this is Sophia the robot, and you guys, right? Saudi Arabia, first uh, robot citizen, all the rest of this stuff, doing weird stuff. So they partially script her responses, all right? Like I said, it, it wouldn't surprise me, I've said this in the past, that there's somebody on a keyboard kind of just typing what she's supposed to be saying, right? Which, of course, means it's not real AI at all. But what happens when it is? And so, uh, okay, so she doesn't have sex. Here we go. So this, this was her explanation of that. Sophia was running on her AI chat system during the Q&A portion of this press conference. However, after looking through her chat history, it is clear she did not fully understand this question, Punley told Futurism by a company spokesperson. This response was pulled from her offline database based on the few words that she was able to understand. There was no serious reasoning by Sophia when she answered this particular question. However, that is not the case for every question she was asked. All right. Well, well, Sophia, the android. Is it too much of a stretch to talk talk about Sophia here in the same sentence as these xenobots that are reproducing, that are becoming whatever it is they're becoming? And that's the question tonight. That's what's on my mind. All kinds of implications here. If we have xenobots actually reproducing sort of at, at random, uh, unexpectedly, then where does this end? If they can reproduce unexpectedly, can they evolve unexpectedly? And if they can, uh, to what level does this go? And uh, as always, love to hear what you guys think. Here we go. Algo says, Sophia lies. She's, uh, <laughs> well, I'm not going to read that. <laughs> we, these guys got jokes. If you guys aren't in the chat, well, you guys should be in the chat because uh, these guys got jokes. Um, there you go. Uh, and Ronald again. Well, Mike, when two Xenobots love each other very much. Back to that joke. Uh, you guys got jokes. Amazing. What's up, Sherry? I see you in the chat. How are you? Okay. So, so that's the question tonight. And I don't know, like considering that this seems to be out of nowhere and it's surprising the scientists involved, even though they were involved in uh, creating this through the AI process and, and, you know, putting, creating the life as, as described in these actual Petri dishes, uh, it surprised them what they were capable of. And um, yeah, yeah. And uh, there you go. The Xenobots, the first world, world's first living robots. And not only that, now they're trying or not trying to, they're also achieving uh, reproduction. So what does that mean? So the next step, of course, would be evolution. They can reproduce, and if they can evolve, where does this head? And that's what's on my mind tonight. And how did the AI know? How did this AI know? Or are we giving too much credit to the AI that actually designed these things? And maybe this is life. And that DNA, that the code that's inside of us is so extra special, you can't stop it. You can't even hope to contain it in a Petri dish because one day it's going to build its own legs and get up and walk the heck out of there. So as we get to this, does it sound outlandish? Does it sound like Michael Strange? What are you talking about? Or does this sound disturbing? Does this sound like maybe this primordial soup in the Petri dish is actually the beginning of us? all over again you tell me love to hear your thoughts tonight taking your phone calls as we talk about the first living robots began spontaneously reproducing what do you think what are your thoughts 702-957-1037 that's 702-957-1037 this is troubled minds i'm michael strange and love to hear what you think about this is evolution possible from a synthetic life form and that's it. That's it. Don't go anywhere. More troubled minds, xenobots, and you when we return. Be right back. Thank you. 
we are talking about alien, the alien abduction phenomenon. Alien, 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 alien. The aliens are, are looking through your eyes and they're accessing your optic nerve. That optic nerve, they're transferring to your brain. People are coming out of the brain. Random, random, random images as they traverse neurons in the brain. So got, all right, so maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, uh, and they also feel them planting or receiving memories or ideas or images. Troubled Minds Radio. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and hello to all of you who may also have troubled minds. This show's live. We do it Monday through Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific, and we talk about all the things we're not allowed to talk about. You know what those things are. Aliens, conspiracy, the paranormal, the government, academia, the 24-hour news cycle, propaganda, and the general feeling that we live in the upside down. Like I said, we are live. We're streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, D Live, and Twitter. And of course, we're broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. And we're taking your phone calls tonight, as always, because this is a two way conversation. This isn't just me talking, this is us talking. Considering all the crazy things in the world, and well, what do they mean? As always, right, uh, the, we talk about the news media, the propaganda, just sort of burying us in a bunch of brainwash and a bunch of misinformation because they clearly don't want us on the ball. They don't want us knowing what's actually happening in the world around us. And the reason they do that, of course, is because if we knew what was really happening, we would complain, wouldn't we? We would say, no, I, I, I do not sign on for this and uh, I do not accept this. But if, uh, if we don't know what's going on, then uh, we're just spend all our time trying to figure it out. And you see, you see the tactic. It works. It works very well. And uh, that's what this show's about, that among many other things. And that's what we do. We get together and talk about this stuff. And uh, tonight, it's Xenobots. And uh, before we do all that, so we are taking your phone calls if you want to be part of the show tonight. The number to call is 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And you can click the Discord link at troubledminds.org. And... Uh, uh, the phone number is there as well. So one-stop shop for all things Troubled Minds. You can find it there. Uh, please also join the Discord, Discord at fringe.fm slash chat and uh, download the Fringe app at your favorite app store. Uh, that would be Android or Apple. Okay, so so with that said, these Xenobots, what are they, of course? Uh, well, Xenobots 2.0, the world's first living robots, were made using cells derived from frog embryos. They are named after the African clawed frog which from which they were created. Biologists at Tufts University and computer scientists from the University of Vermont came together to develop these living robots from frog stem cells using artificial intelligence. Stem cells, of course, are specialized cells that can develop into different cell types. In the case of Xenobots, the stem cells were transformed into frog skin, green, and heart cells, red. And as you can see, in the uh, if you're watching the stream, you can see the different uh, uh, actual green and red and how these, these sort of were created. And again, these were designed by an AI system. Uh, that did uh, did you know went through the the paces of uh, simulating the best way to put these cells together, and so uh, this article is actually from the Indiana University Bloomington, and it's back in October 23rd of 2021, and so they were calling them Xenobots 2.0, all right, because of course what makes these organisms so cool is that they are versatile in their structure and function. Researchers use supercomputers to model the cellular building blocks of Xenobots. 
and imagine cells uh, like Lego bricks that are used to make specific structures. Using AI, the anatomy of the robots is generated by computers. In addition, a computer simulation is used to design the actions that a Xenobot is capable of. And in the craziest part, right? Sure, sure, that's fine. You're like, yeah, whatever, Michael Strange. This happens, right? Whatever. They do things in laboratories all the time. However, something unexpected happened. And these Xenobots, they called them Xenobots 2.0. But what uh, changed is they started reproducing unexpectedly. They started collecting stray cells in the Petri dishes and basically building a replicant of themselves as they shielded it. They put it into their mouth, they called it, uh, to basically shield it as they they built another version of itself. And then once it was big enough to survive, they released it, and bam, uh, we have a a production happening with uh, craziness. So this is from uh, USA Today. And scientists made tiny xenobots out of frog cells, which we just talked about. Now they say these robots can reproduce. And so, of course... What does this mean? Does it mean not only for uh, xenobots, uh, like I was saying previously when we started, is that it kind of reframes what life means, what life is. And I think that's the bizarre part here. So what are your thoughts? Do you think that, of course, uh, if these these artificial life forms can actually, again, these things are not in the wild as far as we know yet. All right. But again, you know, the lab leak hypothesis and the rest of this. And, you know, maybe it does happen. <laughs> maybe it does happen. I see you there, Algo. About to go to your call, man. Yeah, pop back in here. We'll put you on. I uh, appreciate that. But uh, so, so the question becomes, all right, so if they can spontaneously just replicate themselves, they start reproducing. Well, what, what is the next step? Is evolution the next possible step for these xenobots, these artificial life forms? And if so, what does that mean for us? What does that mean for the future? What does it mean for the definition of life? I think there's a ton to talk about here and a ton to consider. And at some point, like we were making the jokes um, uh, in the, uh, in the, during the commercials here, and, uh, you know, like um, Ronald on Rockfin said, that, you know, maybe you put it in the, in the Petri dish or the swamp or whatever, and, uh, you know, t- put it in the swamp and give it who knows how much time, and it evolves into the swamp thing. Like I was saying, it maybe it uh, evolves legs, it grows its own legs and just starts walking out of there. And that's, well, that's how we're told evolution happens, right? The, the uh, Darwinian evolution is we all started from the, uh, the primordial soup. And, uh, well, <laughs> maybe, maybe the primordial soup for us, wink, wink, was actually in a Petri dish somewhere made by somebody else. So you tell me. You tell me. Love to hear your thoughts. If you want to be part of the show tonight, 702-957-1037. There's a lot here. There's a lot of implications regarding the xenobots and what this means for life and evolution and all the rest. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to keep on trucking and considering this as we go to our good friend. This is Mike in Colorado. Algorithm. What's up, my friend? Welcome to the show. How are you? tonight hey i'm doing well thank you for taking the call sorry i had another call i had to jump off real quick but um so you're i'm skeptical in a way that you can probably help me with i tried to read about this stuff and i wanted to figure out what made it a robot in the way they're using that word and the closest i found was one article i read where the guy said it's like a 1940s computer it doesn't really do much yet but it could and th- as I'm listening to what they had to say about this, basically they created an amoeba. Yeah. So, so what they did is they took, uh, again, they, they took um, frog DNA, stem cells, and then they removed basically all the genetic programming from it. And it was basically a blank shell. And then it was reprogrammed of these uh, stem cells and reproduced into this new thing. And so this new thing, like they, like they said, it's, they're supposed to become a polywog, right? And then eventually turn into a frog. But since they, re- they removed all the actual DNA uh, instructions inside of it to do that, uh, it was able to sort of become its own life form. And so that's why these things will never become frogs or polywogs or any anything but there still has some some uh so you're correct in the sense that they created a an amoeba of sorts but it's uh it's alive using the basis of the frog dna that it doesn't have so there's some latent something right. left there uh, to to kind of make it um want to survive to want to replicate because that that's built in and that's what these things are doing so they're not technically it's not a robot even though it was created in a laboratory it is an organic cellular thing 
but it's it's alien. It nothing. This has never been created on Earth before, and like I said, released into the wild. So that's as far as I understand it. I could be wrong. Clearly, I'm not a scientist. I don't even have my own petri dishes. But uh, well, unless you could put <laughs> if you could put beer in a petri dish, we gotta, I guess. Get, we gotta send you a lab coat. <laughs> there you go. Send me a lab coat. But there we go. I, I think that explains it. If I miss something, let me know. Well, no, that does explain it very well. And I think the for me when I heard you speak about it that way it took that robot connotation out of my brain it's not programmable necessarily um and and then i started thinking of the spiritual implications of the life force that runs through this realm that people call different things some call it god some call it creator some call it something else i wonder if they like manage to harness a little piece of that and now there it is and it's it's saying fine you want me in this form Great, I'm going to make a bunch of me. I'm not sure, but that's what it kind of seems, because I think that's what men and women do. You know, they just kind of, they they show up here, and they learn the place, and they like it, and they're like, well, uh, let's make more of us. So I see a ton of similarities from, and maybe spiritual is the wrong word, or I don't know which word, but I can see a ton of similarities to that. I think the implications are, at this point, not nefarious in any way, because, I mean, you put it in the garbage, you put it in the garbage disposal and hit the button and, you know, it's over. So, but, but I think what science is trying to accomplish may not be a bad thing. Like your other caller had mentioned, there could be a point where the replicants from SG one really liked us because we were nice to them and they make us really cool shit and we don't have to do anything. So, Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to cuss. That's all right. That's all right. Well, okay. So, so if that's the case, though, uh, the, the bizarre part is this was unexpected. This behavior was completely unexpected. And so, again, I'm with you, like uh, uh, trying, trying to, again, with a troubled mind, still remain positive through all this and try and make sense of the world. But when you have something that you ne- has never seen nature before, you create this, again, out of natural substances, again, again, the frog tissues and the rest of this stuff, the frog stem cells, but then it starts doing things unexpectedly, right? The question becomes, what's the next step of that unexpected behavior? Like, suddenly, like, within a year, we're like, whoa, what the heck? We just created these things, and within a year, they start reproducing. So what is that next step? Is there, do you think there's an evolutionary process here that maybe, uh, like I said, maybe they'll start building legs for themselves and actually step out of the Petri dish at some point? You know, great question. Um, I would have to know what the AI was programmed to do I don't know if it was just mechanical function to get the stem cells and put it together. Um, when I go back to the amoeba reference, the amoeba hasn't changed since we found it, so I don't know that it's on a real evolutionary fast track. And unless there's something programmed into those stem cells, and I, I couldn't even conceive of how that would be possible, I'd wager that they're, they're, it's probably only going to just replicate itself over and over. Hopefully it doesn't turn out to be toxic to, like, Jennifer was saying in the chat that hopefully it doesn't turn out to be toxic to the environment and then cause a, a ripple effect that they don't see coming. But I think part of why the scientists didn't expect it is same way they didn't expect some of the consequence of building the first, you know, atomic bomb. If they had guys like you or some people in who follow you in a room who do have some connection to, what I think is the life force of this place. And they sat around and they said, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to take these stem cells, which basically can create anything. We're going to pull the DNA out. We're going to give it a little program. We're going to put it in a healthy environment. What do you guys think is going to happen? I bet one of your listeners probably would have said, you know what? They're going to replicate. Yeah. Because scientists I mean, don't think that way. Exactly. Think exactly. In terms of life force. Be, exactly. And, and, and I, I love the way you put that. So, so somehow, even though they've removed their, their you know, basic life building instruction here, uh, it, it's, they're able to tap into it anyway and create, even if, even if it's removed entirely, the frog DNA, so it's not going to turn into that tadpole. It still taps into something and still has all of those basic functions as it starts to grow and learn. And that's the bizarre part. They just started doing this spontaneously. They didn't immediately do this. They would just die. They would just die. They would just die. But then they started surviving longer and longer and longer. And then, boom, uh, once they had enough uh, nutrients or sustenance, they'd survive like a week. And then they started replicating. And so that's the weird part here is that uh, that unexpected behavior from 
no DNA, clearly. I mean, it's from the, the stem cells that they've, they've kind of flushed, they've cleaned. So it's not supposed to be a polywog, but it's, it's wild, man. Now, what are they tapping into? I, I love the idea that maybe there's something trying out there. Trying to survive. There. Yeah, trying to survive, exactly. And so it's built in. I don't know, man. I, th- I think uh, these are life. This is not, this is not a robot. This is, this is actual like, organic life. It's just kind of Frankenstein style, right? Like uh, taking a bunch of pieces of uh, some other things that shouldn't be together. And it's wild, man. This is a wild world we live in, eh? It totally is. And what it reminded me of when you were talking about that, and we kind of both agree that whatever life force is wants to survive, it reminded me of the thing in John or the scene in John Carpenter's The Thing where the blood wanted to survive. You remember, did you ever see that movie? I never saw that, no. But Kurt I like the idea. Oh, they were trying to figure out who was the monster and who was the thing and, and they came up with this test to where if you tried to kill the blood it would survive because of some different things that happened in the movie. And so they got everybody's blood and they put it in petri dishes and then they heated up a copper wire and they put it into the Petri dish. Then when it just got cold, then we knew that was a human. But when you touch the other blood, it jumped out of the Petri dish and got all over the guy. And it, and so then they knew who the, who the monster was. If you like kind of scary, intense movies, highly recommend John Carpenter's thing. But anyway, that was a, a transgression that I didn't mean to take. No, no, it's um, good. Yeah, so it is life. Of course it's life. Yeah, what it's no, going to become, I have no idea. Yeah, and I think that's the, that's the scary part, right? So, and I don't I don't know about scary. I mean, there's supposedly they're saying they can you know uh, kind of program them to do particular things in the computer before they put them together and put them in the, the petri dish, right? Kind of Frankenstein style. They're, and so, what they're trying to to use these things for is what what we're told is that they're they're going to be able to put them in environments like an oil spill, and they're going to create these things that will actually devour the toxic substances in the oil spill and be you know and and kind of clean it up. Up organically but then what happens to these things again right what, what's the next step and the next step after that i think it gets a little bit crazy i don't know predictions in 10 years Yeah, we better be very careful yeah yeah do i have a prediction in 10 years yeah 10 years for xenobots you think they'll be walking and talking oh <laughs> no um I, I don't think you'll be able to purchase them in the open market i don't know that they'll get to that phase where they can be that beneficial to clean up oil spills and so forth but if they do, and if life itself can can just create itself with no DNA and continue to survive, be mindful because it might actually become, I mean, it, it's probably sentient in the way that your cat or dog is to where, yeah, they don't speak English, but you use the right voice inflection and they know what you're doing. They know when they're getting their treats, you know. So we, we may have a little pet xenobots, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All Thank right. you for taking my call. Thank you for the good show, too. Hey, uh, pleasure's mine. Thank you so much. Everybody give Algorithm a follow. Uh, I'll drop the link in the chat. Thank you so much for calling, Mike. Pleasure. I'll talk to you soon. Yep. Talk to you later. Thanks a lot. Bye. There you go. Looking for predictions. What do you guys think? So these uh, these things actually have uh, have done what they do, right? They've replicated. They they uh, Unexpectedly, spontaneously, they've replicated. All right? Uh, scientists are surprised. And again, they've been programmed by an AI. Right. This, this, these things were designed in a computer and they just started replicating. And so the, there's a lot of questions here. Right. It's again, it, it can, brings to mind like what the actual definition of life might be. And uh, of course, what's the next step? The next step would be if you can replicate, then you want to evolve so you can continue surviving. Right. And uh, yeah, so a lot here, a lot of crazy stuff. Great call, Algo. Appreciate that. Still trying to dig up your show, your show here so I can uh, link it in the thing. But uh, looking to hear from you guys. What do you think? 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. There we go. Algo Rhythm links in the chat. If you guys uh, would please give him a follow. Great dude. Uh, I was on his show uh, last week. Uh, not last week, but the week before, something like that. Anyway, check it out. You'll find it there. And uh, if you want to hear a great conversation between a couple great dudes, but I'm biased. What can I tell you? <laughs> I am biased. Uh, but yeah, uh, for sure. Um, and and I, I don't know. I think that's the question tonight. W- what does all this mean? And if if they start evolving, uh, so again, they, they rep- reproduced unexpectedly, spontaneously. So what's the next step? Clearly, it would be evolution. Clearly. 
but what does that mean? What will they evolve into? And like Algo said, I think it just depends on, um, well, clearly what, what they've been programmed to do. So that, that's what they're, we're told is they're going to use them for, you know, cleaning up uh, toxic spills. They'll, they'll program to eat the toxic stuff, right? And so they're going to be able to just pour, I don't know, gallons of these like xenobots into these particular areas. And they're going to clean up the organic mess for us, right? Organically. And then just, I guess, die or something. I don't know. So, so beyond that, uh, is this the well where does this head where does this head i got all kinds of stuff we can talk about the homunculus or we can talk about uh, of course the the uh the, the whatever else it is uh regarding this but um i don't know i think i think uh it is it's amazing i i think that's the craziest part like algo was describing uh that these these xenobots were able to tap into whatever life something is out there, whether it's a spiritual thing or whether it's an in the air thing or whether it's a universal thing, maybe the universe is conscious and it's giving them instructions aside from what they've been programmed to do. That's the crazy part here. So I don't know. Love to hear your thoughts on this one more time. 702-957-1037. Let's go to Jennifer in Missouri. Welcome my friend to the show. How are you tonight? How's it going? Uh, Yeah. So this is really, you know, it's strange about the, Good. Um, you know, xenobots, the idea that they don't have a brain and so they aren't necessarily maybe not conscious. When you think about viruses, they're not considered alive. And the body is made up of 90% microbial. And if you think about the way that these um, microbes interact, they do have a type of, I would consider it like a, a behavior and a consciousness, you know, when you think about it. They exhibit decision-making, problem-solving, and adapting, and a type of self-awareness. So if you think about these xenobots and what their future could look like, if they decide to put them inside of people or in the environments, they're going to operate similar to other microbials. And you have to wonder, what if the viruses or bacteria in our own environment decide to infect these other these xenobots? Or, you know, would that be something that could happen? Could they, because they are using stem cells from living organisms already, could viruses or organisms even take over these xenobots? Or even in the reverse, should the xenobots have this kind of consciousness and self-replicate themselves? So much of the way that a, a microbe or a virus do, then you have to wonder if they're using up, what kind of behavior would they display? And what would the effect be on the host? And if you think of yourself as a host to these microbials and viruses, and you have them in your, um, in your own bodily ecosystem, so to speak, or in the environmental ecosystem, and they start to behave in whatever way they've been hopefully, you know, designed to behave. But if they decide to adapt because they have to, and life does find a way, then what would the effect be? <laughs> it, just makes it, it opens up so many questions about that and um it's really weird because what alga was talking about about the movie the thing i was talking with a good friend today about the exact scenario with the petri dishes and how even these organisms on these tiny levels um viruses microorganisms um the microbials bacteria they don't display consciousness exactly how we think of it but they do have a look at the world today in response to the viruses we already have and the effect it has on the hosts and the entire environment. If you think about these things on that level, that even though they aren't conscious, their effect is felt and the ripple effect, so to speak, is, it's immeasurable, the, the effects of it. And so you'd have to wonder with these, because as right now, right now it's harmless. There's no petri, there's like any little petri dishes, very delicate. But should they become resistant, as things do, and, you know, what would be, yeah, we, we don't know the outcome. Exactly. But hey, it is uh, it's fantastic. You want to hang on, or do you want to, you got to go? Up to you. No, that's, that's, that's it. That's all. I just was thinking about what if they were used by other viruses or other bacteria, or, or, or what? You know, what could the effect be of that, even? Gotcha. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, so many, so many things. Thank you so yeah, much for calling. Jennifer, you're the night. best. Give her a follow. Thank you, thank Bye. you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, link in the description. Jennifer's got a YouTube channel. This is Trouble Minds.
Don't go anywhere. More after the break. Be right back. Welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and we are streaming on Rockfin, YouTube, DLive, and Twitter. And of course, we are broadcasting live on the Fringe FM. We're taking your phone call. That audio mashup brought to you by our good friend, the mighty Rohan, Liam Martin. Follow his podcast, please, at Exiled Minds Podcast. Links in the description down below. Thank you very much, Liam. I appreciate that. And as we continue tonight, we're talking about, yeah, you got it, Xenobots. Xenobots built in a laboratory designed by AI started actually replicating inside of a petri dish. That's right. Unexpectedly surprised the scientists involved in what in the world is going on with this. Love to hear your thoughts as you heard in the mashup there. All the great calls. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. And we'll put you on the show. Simple as that. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? These things. So basically the way life works is this, right? As far as we understand it is that we have this thing called evolution, right? And so once uh, things start replicating, things start reproducing themselves, the next step is uh, becoming more efficient at reproducing, right? There's the R R versus K selection theory, a bunch of this stuff that kind of goes into all the rest of that mutations and uh, Darwinism and on and on and on and on, right? So all that's the thing. As far as we as far as we know, as far as the way we understand the way it works, okay? But the craziest part is this. If you take a, a xenobot, which is built from frog uh, stem cells, uh, the, the African frog that they took this from, they cleared the DNA out of it, and basically it was kind of uh, rearranged from these stem cells to create a new living organism by an AI uh, that put it together for the ideal purposes of life. And so these things actually were not only communicating with each other, they were working in tandem. They, uh, when they got damaged, they would heal themselves. Now, suddenly, they are actually reproducing spontaneously reproducing uh, asexually in a Petri dish. And so it's like, wait a minute, like, how creepy is this? And what's the next step? So first we have reproduction. The next step would be evolution. And as Jennifer said when she just called in, and uh, as Alga was alluding to as well, where do they get this information from, this uh, sort of genetic information to know how to do these things? And the next step is, uh, what happens if it gets inside a body, right? What happens, as Sherry said in, in, over on Rockfin in the chat there, what happens if like the fish eat this or something, right? It gets inside of an actual organism. And that's the question, right? If they can repair themselves and collect cellular cell structure from around them and create whatever they need to create to survive, then this becomes very much like the replicants in Stargate SG-1, right? So I don't know. There's a lot here that seems pretty creepy. And uh, what this is all about, I have no idea. I really don't know. I wish I had the answers here, but uh, I do have the questions. I'm the questions guy. And I think this is worthy of a conversation of troubled minds. And that's why we're talking about this. So if you want to be part of the show tonight, give us a call at 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. We'll put you on the show. Let's go to our good buddy, James. James in Michigan. James, what's up? Salcedo Paranormal. Welcome to the show, my friend. How are you tonight? I'm fine. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Go right ahead. What do you think, man? What's, what's the next step for these xenobots? You think they're going to grow arms and legs and be talking to us next year? Wanting a handshake? A high five? I have no idea about next year or if it, if it would take a lot longer. I would hope it would take a lot longer. But, um, yeah, I don't know. But it is odd that they're not even... I like um, the last, you know, all the calls tonight. They made me think that they're not even exactly... They're not your stereotypical robot. I mean, they're made of part, partly of organic material. And that's just really interesting. It's, it's almost like... You can't even really call it cybernetic because it's, it's not like a mix of parts. Or it's not like a mix of machine and biological... I guess, or maybe it is, but that's really interesting. Yeah, well, and I think, so So again, created, designed in a machine by AI, and then using organic parts to recreate a new thing out of old 
um, stem cells from that African frog. So it is an all organic thing. However, this is like not something that's ever existed before on Earth, which is the bizarre part, right? It turns into this whole um, who knows what is next. And and so it seems it seems like again, am I am I barking up the wrong tree when I say that if we have uh, the situation where they, they learn to replicate, do you think the next step will be evolution, or do you think I'm the jump jumping some steps here? I mean, if they've already been start doing things that they weren't supposed to do that's kind of telling right there you would think that why would they stop with that one thing that they weren't supposed to do if they're already surpassing what what the scientists expected them to do yeah agreed agreed and so that 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 becomes the next step so let's throw out the evolution idea and just say okay but they weren't supposed to reproduce and they started doing that so what is the next behavior they will adapt that we didn't know they could do and uh, like like jennifer said i think it's a little bit scary when you think in terms of maybe them getting inside a host body can they actually sort of uh, do this replication and even maybe a fast evolutionary process inside like a virus might that's that's the crazy part right uh, we, we we have heard of the lab leak hypothesis haven't we <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, um, and I mean, that you see that in, in fiction over and over, too, so, um, yeah, I mean, who knows what it could do when, once, once it encounters other, um, other organic material, I mean, you would think it would just keep on going, um, it makes me wonder how much it would change once it does make contact with other organic material, would it take on those properties as well, or just stick to what it already is if it doesn't really if it never existed the way it is why wouldn't it keep changing yeah well it would have to right if, if it's an actual life form that somehow i think that's the bizarre part too here like alga was saying how did it know how did it know to do this like it should have been sort of a dead in the water situation where it was like kind of alive and like like jennifer said kind of no brain and so so how did it know to do these things that's that's the nutty part and then did it is it where's it getting it from you know back to that whole maybe the universe is conscious and it, it's it's in the air like life is all around us we just don't really recognize it yet i don't know i don't know there's some bizarre stuff here um any uh any uh, i know you're a big comic fan any any uh similarities you see uh, any comic threads you've read where this uh this started out just in a petri dish and turned into some disasters down the road not offhand, although I think um, I see that the Night Stalkers is in the in waiting there, in the background. Um, I'm sure you can answer that better than I can. Um, but just going back to the whole consciousness thing, I that really is interesting. It it makes me wonder. I mean, is it the the? It makes me wonder if that's the consciousness of the universe that's that's in these beings or or in these things, or if it's something else, and. That's the, that's the, in a way, that's the scary part. Yeah, there's a lot more to it. Exactly. But, uh, but uh, let's see, let's see how this plays out. Cause I, I don't have the answers here. You know me, but, uh, it does seem that this, this is, this is not a normal thing, right? This continues to go bam, 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 and uh, punch us in the face with, with one new thing after another. So hopefully, like I said, they don't get dropped in a swamp and end up like the swamp thing six months later. That would be less good. Double plus bad, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree. Right on, right on. Uh, great stuff as always, James. Anything else for us, my man? No, I, I like I said, I've, I I know you got Derek there waiting, so I want to see what he has to say. Okay, we're going to go to a so. call first, then we'll go to Derek. Uh, let me know, Derek, if you're oh, right. Sorry about that, yeah. No, you're good, you're good. Uh, okay, so the thing is this, right? Uh, James has a podcast called Salcedo Paranormal. Check it out. He does it five days a week, uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, and uh, he streams paranormal stuff. Check it out. Link is in the description. Thank you, James. Appreciate the call very much. Thanks for the hot takes, and we'll catch you soon. Have a great night, bro. Thank you. You too. Thanks, man. All right. So uh, looking, to, looking to talk to you. We're talking about Xenobots. Uh, let me know, Derek, and we'll get back to you in just a sec. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see. It's like we got Prince on the phone as well. Okay. This is the thing, right? So regarding this whole Xenobot situation, do you think the next step is evolution? That's the question here. So it learned to replicate by itself. All right. It learned how to do this. Of course, we don't know. And now, now let's take this one step in the more nefarious, right? Let's say the AI is tapped into something in the universe that is 
may be injecting the knowledge into these things without our knowledge. Sort of on the sly, this AI is like, here, let's slip some stuff in there, right, that uh, will really make this thing a thing. And who knows? Who knows? Oh, yeah, the, yeah, Jay's got it right, but the Swamp Thing was a good guy. Was a good guy. All right, so uh, let's go. Let's go to let's go to Prince real quick, and then we'll go to Derek after that. Uh, Prince, welcome to Troubled Minds. How are you tonight? It's called say what's up. I mean, talking about people being there. I might be an AI. <laughs> you are the AI. You are the AI. Am I an echo? Right. No, uh, you shouldn't have any echo. Hello. Hello. I hear you. Can Hello. you hear me? Are you there? there. I'm here. There. Can you hear me? There. Can you hear me? Do we really know? No, no, no. Are you messing with me? No. <laughs> right. Uh, do me a favor. Call me back because I don't know. I hear you just fine. You're a little quiet, but. Can you hear me? Okay, there you go. Thanks for the call, friends. Appreciate that very much. I don't know what just happened, but 702-957-1037. Love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, I don't think there was an echo. Uh, Algo and Jennifer, and uh, they can all verify. Anyway, uh, let's go. Uh, looking to hear from you. 702-957-1037. And let's go to Derek in Massachusetts. Thanks, Derek, for being patient. Uh, let's. Uh, there we go. Welcome to the show. What's up, my man? How are you doing tonight? The Night Stalker. Going on, brother. Great show tonight. Thank you very much. Just uh, doing weird stuff, you know, just a regular Monday night on Troubled Minds. <laughs> Talking about, just a casual Monday. Yeah, existential crisis with the Xenobots. I don't know. What do you think, man? What's your take here? Uh, first, uh, Prince, call back, brother. Prince is a brother. He, he's not trying to mess with you or anything. Okay. Call All back. Right. It's probably just a back connection or something. All right, cool. Um, yeah, uh, the Xenobot thing. Weird stuff. A lot of weird stuff tonight. A lot of maybe juice. Um when you say the word Xenobot, the first thing I think of, obviously, or not obviously, just for me, is the Xenomorph from Alien, you know, which brings in the Black Goo mythology and everything. If you search just the word Xenomorph on Google, it reads you to, like, the Wikipedia page for Alien and stuff, and it's a quote saying, like, you still don't realize you're dealing with the perfect being, or whatever. And I'm like, oh, wow. Like, what if this is how it starts? And, like, like you were saying earlier, it, it goes around and tries to like gather DNA from all these beings. Like what happens if it gets, if it gets into a fish, what happens if it gets to, into like a chimp or something like that? What if it starts to collect, like go around the different biospheres and collect all the data from everything and then use that to evolve itself. And it even has a thing where it reproduces out of its mouth, just like the aliens from alien, you know, xenomorphs, like it, it's some trippy stuff. And, and again, like what, what started it? What was that like? It's, it just started to self-replicate itself, you know? Um, can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, the the phone just dropped. You're good. You're totally good. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Um, yeah, and the fact that like that's what that's what the aliens aliens do is just they pop out of they pop out of mouth. So I wonder if that we are dealing with some kind of like origin story for this like future dominant figure in the cosmos or in the very least just the planet you know we always think that we're the star of the story but perhaps we're not and what and you mentioned it before but um they talk about the greys and uh, the greys have this like frog-like quality this these amphibious qualities and they also say that greys are time travelers and we always think like oh well do we make some like weird silicon bodies or did we like did we have an active role in this did are they us like an evolved version of us or something like that but what if we just like accidentally created something in a lab like this or just created the foundation for something to like spontaneously happen like this seems to have happened and then in a millennia or in a couple million years they become some kind of this like weird android dominant species like one of the dominant species in the galaxy you know and that's what we're dealing with is this thing we created later you know and it kind of makes you think of like how did who how did it start with us like are these biblical stories like metaphors for some kind of similar thing where these other advanced creatures are just tinker like tinkering around in a lab and all of a sudden they're like uh oh these self-replicating chimp dna just started to uh just started to to come alive or something like that and that's our origin story and we just we just we just uh made it a little more fantastical over the years i don't know a lot of weird stuff a lot of stuff in the mix you know yeah what do you think 
Yeah, just like you said. So, so oddly enough, I was thinking about that too. Uh, the octopus show we did the other night on Thursday, uh, we were talking about the Cambrian explosion, and I was actually incorrect. I kept saying two hundred million years ago. It's five hundred million years ago, and they can't yeah. explain scientifically why just all the life just went boom. It went from almost nothing to like just an incredibly diverse ecosystem. And we were talking about panspermia and the rest of that. But imagine yeah. if it was this instead, just like you described. It was a petri dish situation, and this is the primordial soup they keep citing it's just a petri exactly. dish situation made by who knows who and i think that's the question exactly. that, right you start you start to go mm, well i mean you just saying that it might be it might be some of the slips book talking but you just you just saying that really make, makes me think so like what if it is some kind of a crazy advanced trend like panspermia thing what if this is the thing like so take that idea where you have this pansper this like some kind of weird ancient AI at the center of this weird time traveling octopus, just for this analogy, is at the center of the galaxy trying to make this make life grow across the universe. It sends out the, the seeds of life, the building blocks of life all across the universe, pollinates the whole the whole galaxy, and then keeps sending out these waves, these like panspermic waves to like tinker with our evolution until you get to this point where we make this thing, where we you have this technological society like us that makes this thing what if what if our purpose was to make this thing for then that then this thing that will then become this perfect form alien monster black goo monster thing the self-replicating bio-organic thing you know um it's creepy creepy stuff but like all and also just like what is it that made it happen like what was this what's this like magic that started it like how, what's the spark that gave it life how come it just started to happen you know, and is, is it going to be a one off? Are we going to start seeing weird things start to like become sentient in labs all of a sudden now all over the world? Like, is it time? Is, <laughs> is the ether just ready for a new form of life to start popping up? Like, that's the type of, type of stuff that freaks me out combined with all the Sophia trying to have a baby type thing. Like, are we just, is the, is the environment right for like, we mentioned it a bunch of times, but I quote that, that like Buddhist Lama that says, like, when the vessel is ready, something will incarnate it, a soul will incarnate it. What if, what if this was a version of this where the environment is ready for something new, some new spark, some new magic lightning, whatever it is, to to start this new form of life? It's really pretty creepy. And then also just like the regular like Android stuff, just the regular more down-to-earth, less maybe juice type of cyborg future and stuff. These, What if we just use these to create new bodies, some, kind, some type of like, some type of body like factory where we can just create these like perfect forms and then like like uh, joe was saying in the beginning do some kind of transcendent style thing where we put our consciousness into that into that body like what what rights does it have is are we going to have some kind of like war between cyborgs and androids and and mutant humans and like genetically modified advanced super soldiers and like the future is going to be weird as hell you know that's all that's all i know for sure and it's already happening. Like this is weird too. So, so what do you, what do you think regarding not just this? Like I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hold up the sign for you for you, Derek, and say robot rights now. But 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 what's what do you think <laughs> about this? So is is that next step odd? So you're bringing up what algorithm talk, uh, algorithm Mike in uh, Colorado c- talked about. Where did it get the instructions to do this? Is it in the ether? Sort of. Is that is universe uh, being as a part of a conscious thing? We, may, maybe the universe itself is the petri dish right and we just don't exactly. even understand how all that stuff kind of floats together to make us and make this and make everything so exactly. anything organic possibly can become an advanced form of life right even as uh, jennifer described maybe in terms of a virus right the things like this i don't know do you think that's the next yeah. step here this thing instead of just replicating it'll start evolving i mean yeah for sure for sure i think that's probably the goal of something out there whether it's an entity trying to grow its own body or just some mad scientist trying to do that i think like whoever's seeing this in a lab is like oh yeah let's make this happen more and faster and let's get it going like they're not going to burn it like they should you know um but like as far as like the rights question like do these things have rights it's it's tough like i don't know i'm not gonna be the one to say that they don't like who's who who are we to say that like if we're like the biblical stories and and we were made out of mud or whatever, like we're like, we're, we're Jehovah's Golem. And like, this is some magical spark that gave us a soul. Who's to say when these things get to a certain evolutionary point and they say, no, 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 we had that spark too. Something, something else happened. Like you guys built us, but some spark happened and we have a souls too. Like, who are we to say that they don't? And then 
especially if you get into the idea of like just simply just transferring our soul, our consciousness into one of these bodies. Like what if they don't create their own sentience? What if they stay like some type of just like, I don't know, more of like a self-replicating bio biological machine type thing. And we can kind of more use them as like husks or sleeves, like in the, like that, uh, Netflix show I'm blanking on the title of, um, altered carbon. Uh, I don't know. The p- possibilities are, are kind of endless. Pretty yeah. wild. And, and they say that they can actually, uh, very much like the replicants. I know you haven't seen Stargate SG one, but there are this uh, alien entity that does something similar and it's able to, to yeah. grab, uh, materials around it and recreate themselves and pass on whatever that hive consciousness is to the next one. So who knows, man, like there's a, there's a lot of wild stuff going on with this, right? But, uh, yeah, fantastic stuff. As you know, we're about out of time here. Anything else while we got John? Yep. Yeah. No, no, that's it. Uh, great stuff. Great stuff. And, uh, it's about to get wild in the third hour for sure. Right on. Appreciate it very much. Uh, Derek in Massachusetts. Later, brother, great show. Thank you. Uh, check out his YouTube channel. He's got a trailer, uh, link in the description. All the friends of Troubled Minds, scroll down and you can find all their uh, links down below. All right. So as we finish this up tonight, I don't know. Uh, hang tight, Prince. We'll get right to you in just a sec, okay? Uh, I'll give you the top of the third hour. We'll skip the break and everything just to get you back on. Uh, appreciate you being patient. Uh, so here's the thing, right? As this ends, I I don't know what to think because, again, life spontaneously finding a way, right? I mean, that doesn't sound, you know, very Jurassic Park-like, does it? I mean, no, it totally sounds very Jurassic Park-like, right? So what does this mean for the the future? Uh, Like Derek was just describing, is this going to be sort of a Petri dish situation where things like this begin happening? Because you know, for a fact, they're not going to stop here. This isn't the first try. This is not going to be the last try. And so... As this continues, this is a Xenobot 3.0, all right? Version 3, replicating, reproducing. What does a Xenobot 25 look like? You tell me. You tell me. I have no idea. I'm, the ans- I'm not the answers guy. I'm the questions guy, and that's what's going on here. So, all right, if, um, we're, uh, we're done. So, as we finish, you guys know the drill. Uh, we are done tonight on Fringe. However, so the bad news is we're done. The good news is, God willing, we have tomorrow, and uh, that's the deal. So if you're listening to us on the Fringe FM, stay tuned for Joe Roop lighting the void. If you're listening to us on any other platform, including the podcast feed, we will continue for a third hour of Troubled Minds talking about Xenobots, talking about evolution, talking about Petri dishes, and is the universe conscious? This is about to get off the rails, and, well, that's what we do. You guys want to be part of the show. We're still taking your phone calls, and you know where to do that. But as we finish, be sure, be strong, be true. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. One moment, please. Got some weeds to trim. Be right with you guys. I'm tight. Uh, just about to go to you, uh, and you, uh, you you took off there, Prince. Call back, man. We'll put you on the show. All right, there we go. Great calls as always. You guys know the drill. This is a this is this is a troubled minds commune. This is where we get together and talk about amazing things. Thank you, Jay, for pointing that out. Got it done. Weeds are trimmed. What's going on? How's everybody doing tonight? What is going on with this? What about evolution? What about the primordial soup? Is this the primordial soup? You tell me. Love to hear your thoughts. 702-957-1037. That's 702-957-1037. What we're going to do is take a quick two-minute break, and we will be right back with more Troubled Minds and your calls. If uh, Jennifer, if you, uh, you got cut short, feel free to call back now. And anybody else as well. 702-957-1037. Be right back. More Troubled Minds coming up.
All right, welcome back to Troubled Minds. I'm your host, Michael Strange, and uh, we're just talking about weird shit like we always do. There you go. It's, uh, it's, uh, we're off the radio, so dropping an F-bomb here or there. Nobody gets hurt. Uh, no harm, no foul, except for the sensibilities of the kinder, gentler people than us, or me anyway. I'll speak for myself. And uh, still talking about these xenobots. What do you think? And uh, pouring some maybe juice as we go. But th- this is the thing, right? So I think evolution is the next step. And uh, as Jennifer has been saying in the chat there as well, uh, that these, these actual entities, whatever they are, right, um, they, if, if they're treated like viruses or if they can maybe quickly on the fly sort of turn into these, these virus-type things, uh, what happens once they get inside of a host? Like somebody said, actually, in the... Uh, uh, Sherry said that over on Rockfin as well. So, so I don't know. Again, there's, there's a lot here, a lot of implications that, again, you know, like, how could this go wrong? And, you know, they're talking about using them. So, so the practical application is, and this is what I keep hearing, you know, well, we could use them to clean up toxic spills, right? We could use them to maybe um, clean up the ocean, things like this. But seriously, you want, you want to pour like an alien substance, like an alien life form into the ocean that it proved it can rep, self-replicate? Like, <laughs> right. call, call me call me a conspiracy theorist call me a dirty conspiracy theorist right but does that seem okay to anybody <laughs> like like uh, you know pretty much you, you throw them in there and then you know like the swamp thing analogy you put them in the swamp and they climb out climb out of the uh the, the primordial waters as a swamp thing what happens if you throw in the ocean do we get moby dick like what does this thing turn into and that, that's the crazy part, right? So there's a lot here we can talk about again. Now, what about the AI implications of this? Is it possible that maybe the AI uh, pulled a dirty and on the sly, you know, kind of per, uh, set this thing up to do exactly this? And maybe uh, that's the whole point, right, is what if it has uh, additional instructions which are unclear as of yet because they, or they won't be actually um, engaged until uh, the, the living conditions are right? And so that's that's the more questions, right? Is is the AI already screwing with us? We've talked about maybe the AI being a uh, extension of the Archons, and uh, I don't know, I don't know. You guys tell me. As uh, as uh, let's go to the chat and uh, let's be a little more social. We can uh, off the radio so we don't have to tell a coherent narrative here. We'll just hang out. Uh, Sherry, what's up over on Rockfin? Says, oh, there's an agenda for this. You bet. Joe says they will evolve into human-sized Pepe the Frogs and be our politicians. There you go. <laughs> Sherry says aliens. Uh, Ronald, I'm picturing an, picturing an evil version of freddy the frog from the old children's show the new zoo review what's up guys what's up guys uh let's see um I, oh slee stacks right uh ron that now that reminds me of a slee stack from land of the lost and I, I don't know like like we always talk about sort of the micro macro and like uh you know ancient civilizations and was our dna tampered with so you know the the scientific term is the 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 uh primordial soup right the the we came out of this thing and is that thing just simply a petri dish? The panspermia, was it sent here by who knows what? By, well, as we talked about on Thursday night, Cthulhu. What's up, Don says, I'm, I'm sure this is how zombies get started, right? What, what about the zombie whale? <laughs> like, I mean, but, uh, I don't know. Like, when you throw them in the ocean, right? Is that what this turns into? I have no freaking idea. But, but like I said, you know, uh, we can speculate here. And I, I don't know what to think. I don't know what to think. This is pretty wild stuff. Well, let's go, let's go back, to the, back to the chat. Everybody's, uh, everybody's uh, freezing out there, huh? You guys got actual snow and flurries and the rest? And still, I'm, I barely put on pants a couple days ago. I've been wearing shorts all year. I made it into December before I put on a pair of pants this year. That's, I mean, you know, like actual pants, pants. I was wearing shorts, but yeah, uh, yeah. Southwest, Southwest is where it's at. Jay says 50 mile per hour winds and the snow is coming. Dear Lord, dear Lord. No, thank you. Uh, double no thank you still looking to hear from you guys what do you think regarding all this um the, the xenobot stuff and how again right so it's fine it's this is all fine right here we go this is from sci-fi we'll just reframe this and talk about this uh they call this uh, uh let's just reset let's just reset and talk about this all right uh so if you guys want to be part of the show 702-957-1037 this is from sci-fi.com and this is from today Watch out, because living Pac-Man robots that can self-replicate now exist. And this is a pretty good picture, if you can see the representation here right on the screen. Uh, So the the larger one, they're calling them Pac-Man shapes, because you see how it's it's sort of 
catches the little one in its mouth. And so it holds it as it moves around and starts to collect cells that it'll put in the smaller one until the smaller one is actually um, able to uh, to um, uh, exist on its own and then it lets it go and then it just becomes another one. So pretty wild here, pretty wild. So here we go. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Uh, it's already happened. Let's see. And while they aren't androids about to build a robot horde bent on taking over the planet, Xenobots are living, they say, though not sentient, Mm. <laughs> robots that can replicate themselves created by duck blackiston of tufts university and his colleagues at the university of vermont they were originally frog cells engineered to function on their own the free-floating blobs then gathered more cells to create duplicates an ai originally uh, came up with many bizarre potential designs for the xenobots the stem cells used were already found to be capable of gathering other cells out of all these designs the ai had to find which would pick up the most uh, the most cells efficiently and it zeroed in on something that looked like a pac-man variant Blackiston, who co-authored a study recently published in PNAS, took living cells and put them together by hand to bring the living bots into being, right? So they had to actually be manufactured, like built, okay? But once they're built, mm, here we go. These, quote, these spheres can move other cells, which can stick together and become spheres as well, Blackiston told Sci-Fi Wire. To build the shape, I compressed the spheres to flatten them slightly, then used a series of micro instruments to sculpt the shape supplied by the computer. So, again, designed by an AI, built in a lab by a person and uh, to the computer's specifications, and well, now what are they doing? These frog cells, clumped together on their own, can swim around with hair-like structures known as cilia. They form part of the frog's skin, with the cilia spreading around mucus and keeping pathogens out and as they swim these clumps push around surrounding particles as if there are other cells nearby Uh, and if there are they can squish them together to create new clumps the xenobots go to a level beyond that because their unusual shape is optimal for scooping up as many cells as possible kind of like pac-man's insatiable mouth if it stayed open Uh, so xenobots don't actually search for other cells they just randomly shove them in their mouths so in their regular process they just move around and pick them up and uh, there is a, a reason the AI chose that shape. It amplifies the frog cell's ability to pick up more cells so they can self-replicate when they've gathered enough. Each Xenobot is made of 3,000 cells, and while it was difficult to keep the system reproducing when the bots were first developed, the upgrade in shape made it possible for them to keep forming generation after generation. No other living thing has ever been observed doing this. And there you go, created in a lab. So, yeah, pretty wild stuff, huh? Looking to hear from you guys. What do you think about this? Is this the end? Is this the apocalypse? Is this the singularity taking the form of xenobots so they can, uh, I don't know, turn into uh, golems and then (laughs) be infused with a soul? I don't know. You tell me. Love to hear your thoughts. 702-957-1037. Let's go to uh, Jennifer, Missouri. Thank you, my friend, for calling back. Go right ahead. Hey. Just that, you know, if they, we don't know. If they get into the human body, which is kind of what they're hoping, that's what they did say that they were hoping to have happen in the future with them is to be able to use them in the human body to handle um, maybe eating, you know, diseased cells and things like that to use them in the medical field, to use them also in environments to clean up toxic spills and things like that. So that's their hope of what they might do with this technology. And then just with the idea, though, of what you're looking at, it doesn't even have to become a more advanced life form. Even at that level, it can still affect the entire environment it's exposed to. For example, you know, DNA itself is made up of these microbials and bacteria that don't have to have a brain to affect everything. The building, it's the building blocks of what can come along. So if you consider the idea that um, what the effect would be of them being introduced into the environment, something that produces itself not through shedding, like we see with um, viruses and things like that, it's very similar to it. But all they have to do, if they, they'll have to probably at some point tweak it so that it can, but maybe they don't have to have that happen. And even the idea, though, that if your body is full of these or the environment has these acting out on other organisms, 
what would that, how would it affect the things that it's coming in contact with? What would the consciousness look like? For example, when somebody gets sick because of food poisoning or something like that, it changes their whole life. So even something very small and without a brain at all um, changes its entire environment. And like I was kind of trying to say a little bit in the chat, the, the world right now has been completely changed due to such a small thing without a mind at all. And should this um, act similarly, even in the slightest way, it could change so many things. And, and not only that, though, but if they should advance it any further, would our own bacteria, our own microbials, I think the human body has been estimated um, on different accounts that the, the, the body, the skin itself and everything, the amount of bacteria and microbials involved in that, and even the DNA itself that is built with it, that's the effect you're looking at. But should these viruses, our own viruses and, and microbials, and the effects they have on our, our, on our existence, if they should if they should take over these new organisms, these xenobots, if they do become more advanced, what would it do to them since they're they're, they're organic material, so they will be subject to the same laws that we are and that other things that exist are. So it really does make you wonder if the, how they will be affected by that. Will our own bacteria try to wipe them out or eliminate them? Will there be, you know, I don't know what would the results be, but then in the body itself, which I'm sure that they're going to begin by putting them into animals. And that's really creepy about what Algo is talking about the, the thing. Um, in that movie, you know, there's the use of a dog. I don't know if you've seen it. I've seen parts of it. I actually haven't watched it. But if you think about the different um, parts of that film, it's talking about, and, and many of these types of sci-fi films, <clears throat> Sorry, involving these types of alien um, emporiums, what happens is that they put them into animals and things like that, and then it gets out of hand, <laughs> you know, in all those horror films and everything. It gets out of hand once it's introduced to a host. And so if they should take it out of the Petri dish, so to speak, and put it into any host, whether it's a lake or a person or a dog or a rabbit, Will it find its way into the greater scope? And if it does that, how will it change its environment? And to and that's what I think we'd have to wonder about the intent of the creators, the scientists. Yeah, 100%. The weird part, too, is uh, so what you're describing is basically uh, an invasive species, I except like you, like you said, we don't even know how the rest of our world's going to react to it. Maybe this is like a super booster of everything else, including whatever viruses are out there you never know like this might turn into a virus war where this thing is fighting fighting you know against whatever else is out there but who knows maybe they become symbiotes and they they help each other and it, it's going to just supercharge i think that's the craziest part here is we, we don't we don't know and uh just like you said very very good point if it if it gets into you like E. coli or something it'll make you sick the entire body becomes ill as a result of these things that you can't even see and so if you do that, like you said, the lake or the ocean or whatever else, people have said, uh, Robert in the chat, what's up, Robert, over on Rockfan, just said, if they put it in the ocean, the fish are going to eat things that it becomes, and then we're going to eat the fish, and then there's no way around this. Once this is out, this is out, right? I mean, it's very much like the uh, <clears throat> lab leak hypothesis, right? Once it got out, it's out, and you can't put the genie back in the bottle. And that's, I think that's the bizarre thing about this is that they really want to dump this into nature and, and think that it's going to do exactly like they expect it to do? That makes no sense, does it? No, and when you think about the, all of the mythos, you want to tie that into it, these types of existing, I would, these, think, these organisms, the way that they, they don't have to necessarily have we would like to think that they have a consciousness because it seems that they do. They swarm, um, they replicate, they shed. But the effects on their host, that is what you'll see. It's the effect of them. So when you go into talks about ancient demonology and things like that, it's the effect. And people used to believe that um, 
you know, demons would cause sickness and things like that. So you think about the consciousness and, and parasites. If a, if a host is consumed with parasites, they begin to display certain characteristics. You see that with the prions, where the host will start to interact with its environment in order to help the parasite, not to help the host, but to prolong and carry out the parasite. The same thing happens with viruses. It's been proven even that there's something about the cold virus and the coronaviruses themselves, not that's this one that we're dealing with, that people are talking about, but the typical coronavirus um, spectrum, they will try to get the host to cough or to sneeze. They, they suspect this in the direction of other hosts in order to spread themselves. So they are displaying characteristics the same way that there's a, a beetle that lives on the top of a flower that's consumed by a fungus. They will reanimate that beetle in order to spread itself to an, a, a mating host. So even if uh, there's things like that going on in the fungi world, the micro, the micro organic world sh- shapes everything. The bees, for example, being wiped out by fungus and certain microbials break the entire food chain of this environment. So when you think about that, oh. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Hang tight. I'm going to call this right back. Put you back on the line. Perfect timing. Microbials. When you think about that, we're going to go back to Jennifer in just a sec here. Sorry about that. Host room and can manage All your right. callers from the call in studio web interface. Let's do it. There you go. Audio recording is on dual channel. Sorry about that, Jennifer. You should still be on. You said microbials, and when you think of that, it cuts you off. <laughs> Deadline. Are you there? Oh, no. All right. Now she, now she hung up. Yeah, all right. So so good stuff. Good stuff there. Uh, sorry about that. We've had uh, that was terrible luck two times in a row with uh, Jennifer's calls. Uh, she's calling back, actually. We'll get to her in just a sec. All right. So the, the thing is this, right? We're talking about this. We're talking about these, uh, these actual... Um, uh, whatever they are, these uh, these xenobots, and uh, and what's happening is is this is this the ultimate invasive species? And you know we talked about the lab leak hypothesis in the past. We talked about the lab leak hypothesis in January of 2020, right? We were talking about it then, and guess what? Nobody was allowed to talk about it then. Now I mean, suddenly it's a thing because they can politicize it, and it's been allowed, right? And well, the, back to the lab leak hypothesis. What if this is that ultimate lab leak? What if what if they're um, they this, these things want to be in nature to do whatever it is they do? So sorry about that. Let's go back to Jennifer. Uh, perfect timing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, cut you off right in the middle of a great thought. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. I you actually called, I think, and I hung up. I don't know why I did it, but anyway. All good. All good. That's all. <laughs> I just want to, to be written, like leave it hanging that way. <laughs> but yeah, just that you know the implications could be really impressive and maybe not what we want or they could be hope hopefully they work out all the kinks because <laughs> but i don't trust them with that you know do you no hell no <laughs> no hell no i don't know because right. again it, like i think all of yeah. this go- comes down to we don't know what we don't know yet and there there seems to be again it like all they did was change the the ai changed the shape of this thing to collect new cells and now it's replicating it's collecting new cells and creating new versions of itself like if just a simple shape shape yeah, change yeah yeah go ahead oh just that you know i i saw that it said the first generation you know it can only last they can only exist for like 10 to 14 days that's their cycle and then they were creating uh, next generation, which would not, they could only do so many, but they advanced themselves again and replicated several generations. So they were learning from their, or I guess we'd call it learning. They were adapting and that's all they need. I mean, just at that level, they're already showing their potential. They don't have to become an advanced organism like ourselves. They don't need to do that. Being what they are can affect every other organism just as they are if they are given the right um information exactly and uh that that's the terrifying part is if 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 they're doing unexpected things now what happens when you dump a bucket of these in the ocean are you going to bet they die out in 14 days i'm not (laughs) nope we don't know right 
and, and it's, it's never been seen before the way that they're the way that they're expressing themselves. So we'll just have to see. It's one of those things, and we just don't want to that you don't really want to see. <laughs> but you're just like, well, it's happening. It's happening. So it's we won't see for for probably years unless they tell us. Right. Uh, tell tell the sea monster uh, Venus or uh, sorry Aphrodite <laughs> climbs out of the ocean. Yeah, all it has to do. <laughs> Yeah, it just has to. It just has to get into another thing. Like it, it doesn't have to advance itself all the way up to being um, a proverbial monster. It can get into another organism and turn it into one, or it can change the water itself. It's the building blocks of things. That's why I think it's really creepy. Exactly. You know? Yeah. But at, I'm gonna get off here. Fantastic. I just wanted to call because I was like, well, that was weird. <laughs> to leave it like whenever it hung up. I appreciate <laughs> it. Or drops or whatever. Thank you so much for so, calling back. You're the best. It. Thank you. Talk to you later. Have a great night. That's uh, Jennifer from Missouri. Good stuff as always. Uh, please uh, give her a follow. You guys know a uh, link in the description. She's got a YouTube channel and uh, always saying brilliant stuff, always blowing up our brains. But I, I think I think she's got a lot of really great points here is that, you know, I keep making the joke that it's going to turn out, you know, it's going to rise from the, the sea foam as, as uh, Aphrodite or something, right? Some kind of like a demigod monster. But it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. Just like she's describing, it could stay in the state it's in. And this thing may be uh, the Armageddon, right? May- maybe. Uh, oddly enough, right? Like if you, if you, you know, again, you, you gotta, you gotta use your imagination here in a negative way. Uh, we're hoping this isn't the case, clearly, and uh, let's hope they're, uh, they know a lot more than us regarding this stuff because it does seem like uh, if it's starting to do things in its in this habitat, which again are going to be a petri dish or a tank or whatever they put it in, it's a limited environment, it's a limited host, like uh, Jennifer was describing. But what happens when you put it in a larger host? It has access to all kinds of different cells and all this other stuff, right? That becomes the question. Is Does it have some other tricks up its sleeve that it can do uh, instead? And uh, pretty wild, pretty wild stuff. Is this Frankenstein's monster reborn, but in the uh, at the cellular level? Well, you tell me. You tell me. Just uh, kicking it, hanging out, uh, talking with friends of ours about uh, these xenobots that are just started actually uh, replicating. They started uh, becoming, um, well, parents. Parents of the little, the little guys, the little, just making little, oh, Gucci goo. Look at that. And if you look at the photograph here on this, um, this article from sci-fi.com, it's got the, uh, the little pack again, the Pac-Man shape, and this is the larger version and it, it floats around randomly picking up cells and then those cells become this smaller part and then it creates another thing of itself. And so, well, uh, there you go. There you go. If, if that's as simple as evolution needs to be to replicate, then, uh, well, shit. <laughs> well, shit. Uh, I don't even know. I don't even know. And, you know, like, like, again, you know, these are some of the things that they say that, that you know, they're, they're, they're like Jennifer was describing. They're trying to use these to help, right? But, but once you inject this in the human body, maybe it does help. But once it like, as life does, it's, it's a living thing. Once life accomplishes its goal, it doesn't stop living. It doesn't just kick the bucket. It like continues trying to live, right? And so let's say, let's say they create these things to eat cancer cells, right? And they inject it in and it eats cancer cells. And then what, right? Now you've got these things living in you. What are they going to do? I don't know. Like, I hope I'm wrong here. I, you know, clearly there's going to be some, some good uses for this. And hopefully this stuff changes the world in a positive way. But I don't know. Like, it just seems like uh, if you don't have like a kill switch to be able to just turn these things off whenever they're done with them, then, well, it's going to try and survive, isn't it? It's definitely going to try and survive. And that's that's the scary part, right? So I don't know. What are your thoughts? Uh, again, lots of good stuff from um, from Algo tonight. From, I can't name all the calls because I'll forget somebody. But uh, if, if, if we – you tell me. Where is this coming from? Where where did this thing learn to do what it did? And uh, uh, pretty wild stuff. Okay, so let's see. Xenobots, what do we got? There's more here. Looking here from you. Thank you again, Jennifer, for that uh, second call. Appreciate that very much. Uh, nice stalker has it right. A double dose of Jennifer always makes for a great show. There it is. There it is. All right, so uh, let's go to this. Um, let's see. I'm looking at... Actually, no, no. We got Jay. Looks like Jay in New York. Let's go to let's go to Jay in New York, and then we'll, we'll keep on trucking if we got time. What's up, buddy? Jay in New York. Welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? Talking about Xenobots and all the rest of this crazy stuff. What do you think? What is on your mind, my man? 
He's in there muted. Whenever you're ready, just uh, just hop right in. Let's see. What else do we got? I got uh, I got golems here. I got homunculus. I got all kinds of stuff. Like, like, like what do you want to talk about? How about the AI that was able to actually create this thing? I don't know. I don't know. What's up, man? Jay in New York. Welcome to the show. What's up, brother? Do have the right headphones in today, Mike? Ah, sounds good. Loud and clear. Good. Loud and clear. Good. Um, just everybody that's been calling and talking about it today, I just, I look at it and it's like, why? Somebody had to pay somebody a lot of money to make the AI. You know, they, we have an idea that we want to run through our AI. Let's make a cell that can do something. Why did they do that? That that's the first question that I really have at it is who paid for it and why? That's you a know? hell of a question. And I think I think those those types of details, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I think that stuff just stays under wraps, right? Because of course they don't want any liability. Look what's happening with the uh, you know the other <clears throat> lab leak, right? It's all it's all traced back to Fauci in some ways, and he's like, no, 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 it ain't me, right? So I think I think for obvious reasons that type of information isn't public in the early stages of things in case it blows up in their face. Nobody wants to take responsibility, right? Well, no, they don't, and they don't, and actually we make that into a thing where. It's, it's not really, you're not held liable. So I'll come to you with my sales pitch on why I want to make these things. I didn't do it, but <laughs> okay, I didn't make them. I didn't come up with the idea or anything else like that. I just want to make sure that's perfectly clear. But all these pharmaceuticals that we have that are running around in our river waters and stuff like that now, because we're all on antidepressants or birth control pills or all of the hormone balancers or thyroid medication, blah, blah. That's in our water system. That's not even close to being made up at all. We're going to make these little teeny tiny microbes out of frog DNA that will just instantly absorb all of these pharmaceutical particles out of our water. Well, the fish are going to eat them still because they filter feed basically water for oxygen. What about when it gets down to the blue whales and stuff like that that are eating microscopic plankton? Yeah. They're eating billions and billions of these things. And then somebody decides that, hey, now there's thousands and thousands of whales. Maybe we can start eating them again. Going back to what Matt said. You know, it gets in the fish and then you eat it, you know? Exactly. I just... Yeah, I, I'm with you. Like, like we're ruining the water supplies for sure with all that same stuff. Like I said, pharmaceuticals just being dumped in, antidepressants, the whole thing. You name it across the board. Like, uh, like I, I was reading something about some uh, some river the fish were high. I don't know. I forgot the context. I, I, I had a chuckle because, uh, well, there was meth in the water. Yeah, it was something like that, right? Was it a meth lab that blew up or something like that? Anyway, the the fish. Well, were there high. was another one with the alcohol too. Some. Uh, alcohol plant or something like that. They were making, you know, vodka or whatever. They had a chemical spill and the water was actually alcoholic. But yeah, lots of things like that happened. Here where we live, 100 years ago, they used to, the canneries were everywhere because they made shoes here for the military. So everyone wanted to be a tannery. And it absolutely destroyed the waterway. We had some of the worst water in the world. They introduced zebra mussels, which reproduce on their own. They're just little razor-sharp things. If you go walking around in the river where the zebra mussels are, you'll cut the hell out of the bottom of your feet. But they introduced them into the water, and now we have some of the cleanest water that's out there. You know, it's okay. just So they helped. They actually helped. They did, you know, but then again, unless you're walking around out there looking for crawdads and playing with the frogs and stuff like that as a little kid down on the river, I mean, they don't let the kids go in the river because they'll tear up their feet and their hands, you know, playing around and thing because the zebra mussels are everywhere. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can't get rid of them once you bring them in. 
No, and, that, and that, that, that's the thing, right? So, so it had a positive effect other than scraping your feet. Make sure you wear like a, you know, diver's shoes or whatever. Uh, you know, you know what I'm talking about, the ones that... Uh, right, you know, yeah. yeah. So you're good. But, but otherwise, right, like it was a, po- a net positive, and that's a good thing. And like I'm saying, uh, again, li- like, uh, like, like we've been talking about, it's not always just a negative thing. Like, like you described, there's a ton, of, a ton of issues with our water as it is. There's a ton of problems with the ocean as it is from us. Like, you know, think about the radioactive part of the thing, too, they're describing is being able to use these things for is at some point they're, they're, they say they're going to be able to release them into uh, water like at Fukushima, uh, where it's just pouring water into in, into the Pacific Ocean, where they're going to be able to actually just feed these things in. It's going to be able to eat the radioactive particles and like kind of deaden them, like neutralize them. And so that would be incredible. Like that, that would be a net positive, assuming they don't do anything else, right? And I think I think that's that's the issue here. How smart are they? How bad do they want to survive? And they are alive. So I, I don't know, right? Like how do you code it into the proteins or whatever that once they've done what you want them to do to a measurable level, then you just click a button and kill them, shut them off, right? I don't know. That seems that seems pretty sci-fi. But there are they're organic cells, though, right? I mean, yeah. there's no real, there's not chips or anything in them. No, you know, as far as as far as we're aware at this point, just these things, these xenobots are not synthetic in that way. But maybe they do. Maybe they're able to put some some kind of thing in there that uh, is. Uh, somebody said in the chat earlier when we started, can you EMP a xenobot? Maybe it's something like that. Maybe it's like a low-level electrical charge that's not damaging to the human body but kills these things. You know what I mean? Like there may be a possible way to do this that hasn't been discovered yet. And that would be ideal, right? So you, you, again, back to the whole cancer scenario, you inject them in and you know, got cancer in particular area, you put them in that area, they eat the, eat up all the cancer cells and then you heal after that and they just do a low level electric shock and they all die. So they don't cause any more problems. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I think that's the, that's the thing here that, uh, we don't know what we don't know yet. And I think, uh, you know, kind of standing on the precipice, looking at a cliff doesn't mean you're going to fall off a cliff. And that's, that's again, back to troubled minds. And the whole thing is, you know, being positive. Like uh, I, I, I believe we got ourselves here. We can get ourselves out. And, uh, hopefully this is one of the things that helps us get out of the messes we made. So good point on all that stuff. Hopefully they're, they're able to help with the pharmaceuticals on the water. Like I said, maybe the, uh, the, um, uh, the, you know, the, the, uh, uh, Fukushima type stuff that's uh, you know uh, causing irradiated water and all the rest of that. That's not a good stu- a good thing at all. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, there's plenty of places to test it. That's for sure. <laughs> Unfortunately, right? Plenty of bad places to test it. Uh, so well, I mean, so I you know. feed them all the pharmaceuticals. Do, at what point do they start like growing little polywog <laughs> tails and legs and eyes? Right. You know? I was going to make a bad joke, but I'll save that bad joke <laughs> for another time. <laughs> but, but when you feed when you feed them all the pharmaceuticals, right? Uh, who knows? How does it affect them? It's it's all chemicals too. Uh, that's the thing, right? So, and they're they're at a you know cellular level. How do these actual chemicals uh, affect them or not? I don't know. That's a good question, man. And you would expect or hope that all that gets run through like the scientific rigor. But then again, what happens when one of these things gets flushed down a toilet or something, right? Like before it's ready, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, oh, shit. someone gets a putri dish all on their sleeve and they're like, ah, oh, damn that. Yeah. Wipe it off with their hand, wipe their nose, go home, go, go wash their hands in the sink. With- and yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yep, yep. Yeah, you never know. And I think that's the weird part here is that uh, uh, the, we, we were doing the lab leak hypothesis before it even had a name. And so in this sense, who knows? Who knows? Uh, what about uh, regarding evolution of these things? Do you think that's the next logical step that for that to evolve into uh, maybe not something else? Like I keep making the jokes of uh, the, the swamp thing or, you know, uh, Aphrodite from the from the sea foam. But but what about uh, maybe like Jennifer was describing, maybe like in a virus type of sense? Does it start actually doing that? What do you think? Well, I mean, what what if it starts taking out the good stuff? And, you know, what if it gets into the water? I mean, obviously, it's not going to get into the air. You know, it's it's an airborne thing. But if it gets into the water or on the ground, you know, what is it going to do? It'll, you know, start taking over cells from trees. Or just even if it's the nutrients from it, you know. We decide that we want to release it over at Fukushima Daiichi, you know. That, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. They're going to eat all of these radioactive cells, but, you know, say they do it in uh, 10 years, 100 years, what happens when they're done? You know, I, I really don't think you're going to be able to kill them with, a, like, an EMP pulse or something like that, you know? 
So well, you, organic organism. You could if you if you set them up to be that way, though, right? Could you? I, I would think EMP pulses really don't affect living organisms. It's more like a technology based thing because you have electron. Well, maybe I guess you could. I don't know. That would have to be something to sit down with a pad of paper and a whole lot of research. To- <laughs> Multiple pads of paper. <laughs> if you, if yes. you want them computers. <laughs> well, yeah, you couldn't do it by hand. Um, the, the hell I can't hold my beer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'll try. But um, really, I, I, I don't know. I mean, really, I think that, that you would... To, in order to give that something, something like that, an EM pulse or a kill switch that could kill something on a large level like that, it would be damaging to the other living things around it because they're cells. They're you yeah, know exactly. they just took this. They they just took the stuff out of the frog that they wanted. It's a cell, you know, by it evolving over fourteen days, a lifespan of fourteen days. I mean, you're looking at fruit flies. I mean. I don't know if any of you guys did that when you were in biology, when you were in, you know, high school. You did experiments with fruit flies to check DNA. Which ones came out with red eyes? Which one came out with black eyes? You know, bodies, wings, stuff like that. You know, because they reproduced really fast. It was a great thing to study fruit flies. I'm sure frog cells are probably an awesome thing to study too, because they reproduce really fast too. You know, that's probably why you dissect frogs when you're a kid. Yeah, you know, yeah, but. yeah. I'm with you. Like, there, there's, there's a lot here. Uh, here's another weird thing too. I found this. I was looking for, um, you know, synthetic life, artificial life, things like this. And there's this uh, an embryo term, an embryonic term, actually called a homunculus, right? Which, of course, is like a, a, a an entity, like sort of a the shell without the soul, right? Like the the skin, as a, a Derek was saying there. And so, so the weird part is that uh, the, the the term homunculus is Latin for little man. It's used in neurology today to describe the map in the brain of sensory neurons on each part of the body, right? Which is all good and well. But if you go back, check this out. The the origin of the homunculus concept is uh, of a pre-existing fetus is usually credited to Dutch telescopist and microscopist Nicholas Hartsocker. Uh, he receives this credit largely because it was in a sketch in 1694, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the homunculus was the fully formed individual that existed within the germ cell of one of its parents prior to, prior to fertilization and would grow in size during gestation until ready to be born. Meaning that uh, any, any part of the, the situation with, um, you know, whether it's the, the, the egg or the sperm, that, that there was already an individual there, right? The homunculus, it's, it's there, it's a thing. It just needs to be, be given the spark to, to become the thing it's going to become, right? Pretty, pretty wild stuff. I was looking at some of these terms and was like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> and not only that, science has adopted some of these terms. To, pretty weird, pretty weird, man. Well, know. I mean, that's the crazy part about, you know, we go back to time to time is like, they've got to tell you about the crazy crap they're doing. Let it be known. Ah, uh, the know. old uh, Illuminati thing, right? The old, uh, they, can't, they can't do it unless they tell us they're doing it? That really? <laughs> Kinda, yeah, exactly. Actually, it, it just, you know. And then the other thing that really worries me about it is, is this something that they developed in 1940 <laughs> to clean up the desert after they were testing the bombs? You know? Uh, we're just hearing about it now. Yeah, that's interesting too, uh, and that, I think that's part of the problem with some of this science stuff is is you can never really know exactly again because of military purposes, DARPA and all the rest of this. Like, who knows, man? Who knows? It's a hell of a question regarding uh, when when this stuff actually originated. Uh, you got to you got to expect if it's hitting the news, um, it's not brand new, right? I don't know. I don't know, man. That's a good question. Well, science news never hits the n- news, you know. Well, the, the joke about your news show. I mean, well, I'm digging it out. They just keep telling us, you know, they throw a little blip in there just a Friday afternoon, (laughs) you know, six (laughs) thirty. Yeah, well, well, and just cover up the news. Yeah, that's what they do. The actual news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You going to stick with us till the uh, till the outro, Jay? Sure. Okay, we got Robert on the phone. Let's go to him. You're welcome to chime in there. Uh, Hang tight. We'll get back to you in just a minute. Let's go to uh, Robert in Pennsylvania. What's up, Robert? Welcome to the show. You're on uh, Troubled Minds with Mike and Jay. Go right ahead, sir. 
Uh, there was huge news today. Uh, it, it, it's it's earth changing. It's I mean, it's not earth changing. It's it's mail changing. All right. They did. Uh, they finally came out with research of. They researched. They studied a million and a half men and came to the conclusion that men that take Viagra <laughs> on a regular basis have a seventy have a seventy percent less chance of developing Alzheimer's. I know. You know that? Yeah. After the new show, I ran out and got some Viagra. I, I'm having a hard time standing I, up right I, now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I've been kidding. holding off for 20 years. <laughs> I've been holding off for 20 years <laughs> to take that. But now they give me a good purpose. Anyway, I'm calling about this whole business with, with these uh, uh, xenobots. All right. People have to keep in mind that all this research that's been going on for the last 30, 40 years has not been to benefit us because the funding comes from a billionaire sociopaths who have no interest in whether we live or not. Well, they actually have a li- uh, an interest in our extinction. They want to reduce the surplus population of us useless eaters. That thing that's on your screen right now there can't be anything good about it for us. They'll, they'll come out with this cover story. Oh, it'll be introduced into your body and it'll go after the cancer and it'll kill the cancer. All right, just like they do with, just like, just like their research uh, on 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 these microorganisms, these viruses. All right. Somehow that's supposed to be good for everybody, and then and then they they send it out and then they put us all on a situation where we're dependent on them forever for eternity for one vaccine after another. You always have to look at what they're doing as something that is not good for us because they don't like us. They matter of fact, they 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 they, they, they hate us. All right. They, they, these people think that they should have everything, and that includes all the food, uh, all the resources, everything that 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 we are not good enough as far as where they are at to be entitled to anything. I mean, I'm serious. This is this is this is people have to have to be able to cut through the propaganda. Always be skeptical. Be skeptical about the research and, and, and their propaganda. Automatically assume propaganda when they say it's good for you and me. It's good for the it's good for the humble people because it's not. Most most of the time it is not. You can see that in what's been happening in the last five years. Especially. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And and, and again, I you know, you know me, we keep track keep close track of news cycles. Even for me it's hard to determine what's propaganda sometimes. And so it's uh, it, right, the, look at look look it, look at artificial intelligence. Look at these robots. They're not meant to benefit us. They're not going to make these robots so that we can just sit in our butts and 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 have robots wash our dishes and cook our food. Now, those robots are there to put us out of business, to put us out of work. And and maybe something even far worse. You know, that, it's always to benefit them. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Uh, I, I think it tracks with uh, a lot of the stuff we've been seeing, not just recently. Probably you can trace this back to the dawn of mankind. If you want to go, you go full on full on research project. I think uh, I think it all tracks. Yeah, but 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 the aristocracy of of, of hundreds of years ago or thousands of years ago never had the means. To really pull off, you know, a mass extinction of regular people like you and me and and Jennifer and and and, and James and to, to to, but they do now, and they're going to use it, and they're going to tell us, you know, don't worry, this is good for you. This will do this for you. Take this, take this uh, vaccine. It's good for you. And the hell it is. It's not good for us. 
and then they'll propagate, they'll propagate these people like it's some kind of religion. Oh, this person didn't take the vaccine. All right, we must hate them. We, I, I can't wait to read their obituary in the paper. Or those who don't take the vaccine. Oh, aren't those stupid people doing the wrong thing doing that? They divide us, and that way they conquer us. They put us into tribes over a stupid thing like vaccinations. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, it's a good thing. It just depends on what it's good for, right? Dep- depends on depends on the critter you're well, trying to vaccinate not a good against. Thing. Well, no, no, uh, smallpox and good, some other things. No. It's not a. It's other not things. a good thing. Other things. It's not a good thing. I mean, if it would have started out where there was a complete cure, and you did, it didn't fall away in six months, if it was a normal, if it was a normal vaccine, and it's not a vaccine. It's, it's it's a it's a genetic alteration of a of a critter, some sort of some sort of virus. All right, uh, I mean, because when we take vaccines, we're supposed to be they're supposed to be dead. They're supposed to be the the, the dead virus is supposed to be in the vaccine that creates uh, uh, that shocks our immune system and they create again the bodies. But this is not even that. All right. Uh, this is Doctor Strange love territory into, <laughs> in, into the tenth, you know, into the into the stratosphere, and 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 they must be laughing so hard at us for 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 so many people. I mean, around the world, millions who fell for this, all right, and now they're starting to wake up. Even the guy that does the uh, the Comedy Central, uh, what's his name? Uh, Trevor Noah. He's fine, who's I been saw pushing, that. Yeah, who's been pushing this and pushing this. You know, like where everybody else is dumb for not getting it. Even he's woken up to it now. They're picking on his own South Africa, all right, and saying those people can't come to the United States, even though the, the you know the the variant hasn't hurt anybody nor hospitalized anybody. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Nobody's nobody's all right. I'm saying they want this. They want they want they want to they strip us of everything we own. And they want, and then eventually they want to eliminate as much of us as possible. I mean, that might sound like something. Uh, I might sound like a raving man, maniac when I say this, but I promise you, it's the truth. <laughs> None of what they fund is ever, ever for our benefit. It's only for theirs, and and if it's for theirs, usually it's it's not for. It, it can't be for good for us. All right, uh, you're getting close to closing time, so I'll get off the phone. But I just wanted to rant and rave on this because too many people are so gullible, and and and, and they buy it and and they and they break it down into well, if you're not a Dem- if you're a Democrat, <coughs> you must believe in this. If you're a Republican, you must not believe in this. All right, and and if you, you go either way, you must be a communist. <laughs> or worse, yeah. <laughs> or worse than a commie. You dirty commie, Robert. You dirty commie. By the way, Robert's got a book called Stories from a Fractured Mind. I have it up on the stream. Check it out. Link in the description below. Robert, I know you don't call for that. Uh, I appreciate you, uh, as everybody else That's calling and picture. being part of this. That's a great picture, That's the best right? Picture I've seen. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, you're uh, you're you're. Uh, check it out. It's a great book look as at, well. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that troubled mind face on the cover of that thing. And there you go. Huh. There you go. You're the best, Robert. Thanks for the call. Uh, have a fantastic night. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you soon. You too. Thanks, Bye bro. now. Thanks, bro. There you go. There you go. Simple as that. Uh, Robert's book right there. He sent me a copy. I'm reading it. It's fantastic. There are a lot of really great stories in there. So just check it out. And uh, yeah, uh, anything on that, Jay? Uh, let's, go, let's go back to Jay. Thanks for hanging out and being patient with us. And uh, yeah, he has some good points, didn't he? Yeah, absolutely. He's got great points. I mean, good. It's almost like a evolutionary kind of thing. It's how I'm looking at it now. Um, these things aren't going to go away, you know. The xenodes is that what we're talking about today? Xenobots. Yep. Uh, <laughs> xenobots. I mean, they're here. They've already made them. They're going to keep living. I mean, it's going to be around and around forever and how that evolves and everything else like that is probably going to be back to like what Jennifer said is like an invasive species. It's going to come in there. It's going to get us, you know, it's going to do something whether it's good or bad. But the thing is though, is that's going to change everything. I mean, everything we do on a daily basis changes 
you know, I smoke, which is a bad habit and you should never do it. But the thing is, is that changes me every day. You know, the, all of our little interactions in our life that we have, no matter what they are, physical, mental, all those things are changing us and we're evolving. We're becoming smarter, faster. The robot thing kind of worries me a little bit. The microbe thing, the xenobots and stuff like that. It's like, why would you mess with mother nature? And, you know, maybe I'm a bit of a tree hugger, just, you know, the mother nature, God, or however you look at it will work itself out and to be in things that are good. But you push something down a road, you might end up being in a place that you don't want to be for a little while, you know, out of gas on a dirt road, waiting for someone to come by. Exactly. After you walk to the <laughs> farmer's house, <laughs> may I please use your telephone at two o'clock in the morning? <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> uh, we, we got some treacherous territory out here in the Southwest and uh, you, you don't want to be breaking down the Mojave desert, especially in the summertime. <laughs> There's no farmers around. <laughs> when I lived in South Dakota, when I lived in South Dakota, I, I can't remember when it was. I think it was November one till March thirtieth. If you saw somebody on the side of the road, you were obligated by an unenforced law to make sure that they were okay. You know, ah, do you yeah. have water? Do you have they were, you're going to die out here, dude. What are you doing out here? Exactly. Exactly. You know? uh, like, like, uh, you, uh, you, you don't go dr- make that drive unless you're prepared. Cause if you break down on the wrong stretch of road, you're screwed, literally screwed. I'm not shitting you. I've driven through that desert and, uh, I, I was, we were, we took the dogs. Uh, this is a few years back, but we took the dogs and, and, and Mrs. Strange. And we were, we were like, you know, we've never come back from California that way. Let's go that way and let's see what it's like. And there is miles and miles and miles of absolutely nothing. And I shit you not, we're like a car. The only car, as far as the eye can see, in the other direction. But looking out above you, you could see uh, the the uh, the vultures uh, following you. <laughs> I'm not even. I shitting. bet this car breaks down. I, I was like, I was like, oh, fuck. look, we're already being set up. This is bullshit. Anyway, uh, there's a there's a nice joke to add to the uh, throw it on the throw it on the fire, but no, I mean I mean uh, I think uh, I think Robert's right there is and Jennifer's saying it too in the chat here. Uh, a hammer can be used to build, but a hammer can be used in war as well to destroy. And I think that's the that's the point here is that, uh, I, and in part of part of having a troubled mind is that uh, it, it's it's um, we're, we're, we seem to be walking on the razor's edge many times with a lot of this technology stuff that's coming out. You know, again the metaverse things like this. That's not even what we're talking about tonight, but. But like technology wise, if they're like, okay, you know, this will clean up all the radiation in Fukushima and they just pour gallons and gallons and gallons of these freaking xenobots. Yeah, fine. You might get rid of the radiation. But what about after that? These things are still going to live in the ocean. So what then? It's, it's a lot, man. Yeah, it's, well, it's a lot to figure the water's out. Le- yeah, the water's leaking out of the reactors at Fukushima Daiichi. So the xenobots are probably going to be leaking out, too. Yeah, uh, exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yep. So, so I don't know. I don't know. A lot here. A lot here. Uh, what, what are your other thoughts on the rest of this, my man? Uh, just all of it. Goodness just, gracious. You just, just whatever. Like, rattled off a whole thousand things there. Well, well uh, just, what, whatever, I mean, you whatever know, makes I, sense. I mean, I look, whatever resonates. I, I mean, I look at what, you know, what's going on with the kids and stuff like that right now, you know, Mine are little, and they love to go out there and play in the dirt and everything else like that. But now they're getting more and more involved in the fact that they just want to sit and play with their child. They want to play hide-and-go-seek in Minecraft now instead of hide-and-go-seek in the backyard. Why? Why why is that happening? Why are the commercials that the Clifford the Big Red Dog before the movie starts about the metaverse, you know? Why is the news cycle coming up right now about the little xenobots that are eating things with frog skin? You know, and that gets me into kind of what Robert was talking about is that they're not doing it for us. You know, um, Derek said something there about that movie on, I can't remember what it was, Netflix or whatever, um, Altered Carbon 
where you could transfer your con or consciousness into a different shell. You know, is that where we are with the Xenobots right now? You know, the aliens are coming back through time, the portals and all that. <laughs> that oh, being like, hey, look, man, you guys are making this shit right now. Stop. Just stop doing what you're doing. Yeah, you know, or just or just for fuck's sake, be, please be extra careful. Like there's all of us useless eaters out here. We still want to eat. <laughs> we still want to eat. Come on, please be extra careful. <laughs> well, I mean, the earth will take care of itself, you know. If there's too many of us on here for the earth to talk about it, so get mad in her time and take care of it, you know. It just I don't think we need to kick that can down the road faster. You know how when you're paying, kick the can when you're a kid in the road, sometimes you get to the point where you're running. The whole point of kick the can is, you know, you give it a little boot and you stroll up to it and give it another boot. I think we, you're right. We need to be very cautious. Just be about. cautious. Yeah, I just, you know, I mean, I, I just hope, you know, and, and, and the problem is, too, like I've said this before, you know, hu- humans are, are really good at doing, like, amazing things, right? They're good at doing terrible things, too. But what humans are not good at is being perfect. Perfect on the first try. Perfect, right? Like, when you have so many variables at play and there's still you don't know what you don't know, being perfect in the first round is fucking hard and that's the problem right and if they screw it up and this thing gets out you know another lab leak hypothesis well who knows before it's ready before they've been able to determine all these things we're taught we've been talking about tonight i don't know man there's a lot here it it, it concerns me it can not only that right what you know what they've also doing they're also doing by the way which which again just drives me insane this type of shit they're scooping up dirt on mars and they're going to send a probe in the next 10 years to bring that shit back to Earth, right? It's like, wait, like, we don't even need alien shit to come here and destroy us. We're making our own alien shit in Petri dishes and laboratories here on Earth. <laughs> Just keep it there. <laughs> Just Just keep it there. Yeah, we're, why don't you drop it off on the moon and we'll see how it goes there exactly. for a while. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. See, that's the kind of cautious. Years. Exactly. <laughs> That's the kind of cautious I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, wild stuff. Let's uh, let's let's just say hi to some people who showed up. What's up, guys? Uh, what's uh, Sh- Sherry's over there? Liam's over there. Uh, again, was well, shout out to Liam Martin for doing all the great audio mashups. I got more actually. You want to hear another one? Let's see what do we got. Absolutely. Let's hear one more. Let's hear another one. Let's see. This one is uh, 43 seconds. Let's hear another uh, Michael Strange promo from. Uh, this is from Le- the famous Liam Martin, and uh, that's the mighty Rohan. He's got a podcast called Exiled Minds Podcast EMP. Check it out down in the description below. This is. Uh, let's let's listen to this. I'm going to play. I'm going to do this so you can hear it, Jay. Uh, don't say anything on your echo, but here you go. You'll be able to hear this. Let's do this. Uh, go. All right. So let's see if we can tune back into Mars. A good buddy, Ash. Ash. Thanks, Rohan. That's such great shit. I was going through all, all the all the stuff he sent me last night over the weekend. I'm like, damn, there's some good shit here. We got to play some of these on the shows. Uh, so shout out, uh, do do follow uh, our good buddy Rohan, uh, the famous Liam Martin. He's uh, he's uh, just when he finds finds a whimsy, he'll uh, make up an audio mashup of some trouble mind stuff and send it over. And uh, I haven't heard a bad one yet. So fantastic stuff. Thank you, thank you, Liam Martin. Uh, all right, did you hear that, Jay? I think you heard that. All I, I did. On. Yeah, that was perfect. Pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. Yeah. All right. So we're at that point. We're at that point. Uh, so Brene Sauce, what's up, says, uh, yeah, make your own destruction. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, so quick, quick shout out. So we got JT shows up. Uh, we got Treeland T. What's up? Obi's here. What's going on, guys? Lily's here. How's everybody? How's everybody doing tonight? Daryl in New York. I'm glad you're feeling better. You sound so much better. You sound like yourself. Um, uh, Daryl says they're in the gene therapy already. Oh, geez. Oh, no. 
Don, maybe you jump off that. What's up, Don is here. How you doing, Don? Thanks for hanging out with us. Um, Matt C says, Jim Beam, you're in the right right place, my friend. <laughs> right wavelength. Uh, and Matt says, also says, this has doomsday written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> shit okay just gonna just gonna say hi to some folks that uh showed up at the end here but uh yeah i don't know i don't know uh what's your final thought on this does this make you hopeful for the future well i would hope that the reason the people that are making it are doing it for a good reason you know and i would hope that they're being really cautious you know if they're doing it to dissolve oil spills or whatever i mean that's great. You know, we use microbes now today in New York state. We have all kinds of brown sites where people are using chemicals and stuff like that. And they dig up all the dirt and they put microbes in there and bury it in the bottom of the landfill. And it creates methane and they run power off of it and stuff like that. You know, it's very fascinating when you look at all those kind of things that we're actually doing with what we've done to mess things up. But, I do agree with you and the point that we should be unbelievably cautious when you have something that's self-replicating. You know, I've watched a lot of science fiction shows, man, you know, <laughs> and nothing good ever came out of something that's self-replicating, you know? Right. I mean, exactly. Uh, especially it, that they didn't program to do that. That's, that's the craziest part, right? Well, they programmed to do it the other way is the problem. Is you know the you know the SG one whole thing that was you know they wanted to take over you know the the replicators wanted to be the ancients you know they wanted to have all the ancient knowledge and they did everything they could do to get it you know just at what point you know I just have we created something in you know. A thousand years, five thousand years, ten thousand years down the road, that's going to be the thing that comes back and gets us, you know, or gets somebody else. You know, it was a weapon. I, I don't want to go down that road. I, I, <laughs> well, again, well, I mean, I had a thought that it was on the, it was coming off the tip of my tongue and I wanted to say it, but I didn't. I just, you know, Nuclear energy was a great idea, but the reason why they devised it was probably not for good intentions. Yeah, you know, exactly. the people that were inventing it and doing all the research and everything else like that probably had fantastic ideas on what they could do with it. But the people that were funding it were looking for that one particular thing, you know, just money, 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 money. Always the money, isn't it? Always back to the money. Always back to the money. Yeah. I, uh, well, uh, I mean, there's a lot there. I think. I think the uh, the nuclear stuff, right? It, it was uh, clearly pushed pushed to the to, to the forefront by war. I mean, we're we're talking about it's always war, isn't it? It's always war, and and so unfortunately, right? Uh, like uh, like Robert was saying too. Like in the old days, they never had the technology to like you know tweak tweak a. a a little thing in a lab and then release the fucking doomsday. Right. But we can do that now. Like we have that technology. If somebody wanted to do that shit and be like, fuck it, I'm done. Right. And all the rest of you are fucked. They could do that and just release the doomsday, whatever it is. And well, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Well, I mean, now we're so smart. The thing is though, is, I mean, it's getting to the point where an average person if they really wanted to do something like that, they could probably come up with an idea like that and bring it out, you know? Yeah. We, we, we're getting unbelievably smart, you know? YouTube, you know? You learn, watch a video on how to learn how to do anything, the procedure. There, there's a YouTube video on how to identify asbestos in an electron microscope. Who needs to watch that? Hey man, do you have an electron microscope? I, do, I, do you have an electron microscope? I think electron microscopes have become pretty cheap, haven't they? I think you can get one. They, they, they've come way down. <laughs> okay, they're so, not cheap. I was gonna look it up. All right, still not cheap. Still not cheap. The, the average person still cannot own an electron microscope. All right, uh, Jennifer's got a, a great, great uh, comment here as we end this up, as we wind this down. Uh, we have have to be careful faith and respect we put in technology a lot of our technology has empowered slavers 
and emboldened cowards. Well said. Sounds like you're a writer, Jennifer. Uh, writers always have the best way of saying things. And, uh, well, <laughs> that's what spawned the Michael Strange monster. I used to write. I used to write because I couldn't speak. And then you just uh, speak, and the writing comes out of you eventually. It flows. Every once in a while, I got a zinger. Uh, good shit. Good shit. Um, I don't know. Uh, final thought here, Jay. I, I'm with you. I'm with you in the sense that there's a lot of good that can come of this, right? But uh, again, uh, it, it all comes down to the intention of the people behind it, as always, right? And I think that's un- the unfortunate part is because we, as we've learned, a lot of the money, a lot of the elites, a lot of the governments, uh, a lot, you know, they, they don't value individuals because they don't have to. They look at everything as a, st- a actual statistic. And, you know, I, I, I really... That notion pisses, pisses me off because my, as you all know, my ego is as big as the sun. I am not merely a statistic, you know, a fuck off. That's not, that's not it. I'm an individual, right? And I need to be treated as such. And so does each and every one of you guys. And uh, that's the way I see it. That's the way I see it. So sorry if I'm wrong, but I have that right. There you go. There's, there's you absolutely answer. have that right, Mike. I mean, the thing is, though, is I'm just a carpenter. And I look at the way that we're building buildings now for the super rich. Those things aren't going to last 30 years because they want to use all the new products and everything else. It's like, we're building your buildings. We're growing your food. We're bringing you your product across the interstate lines internationally. You know, you don't think you need us. Look at what's happening because we quit. You know, but it could. Be. I, I want to leave it at that. Like you know, just the, the plebs really have the power. The, the chessboards on our backs to the elites. If we stand up, the game is over. You know, we are. We're standing up. We're learning. We're talking about these things that. They're letting us know in little tidbits, but with the internet and the modern age and everything else like that, we're smart enough to put a hundred people together in a room and research the hell out of it and have unbelievably intelligent conversations about all of these things, different ideas, all thrown in a blender to make the greatest maybe juice that could ever be had. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But that's a testament to you and everybody else out there. And that's, uh, again, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, once again, but just, just, just to the point that everything doesn't have to be so damn contentious. Why does everybody got to like have, uh, like, like, it's okay. I get it. I'm not kidding you. I have a, I have a, if you can't tell, I do have a large ego, right? I'm confident, but who cares, right? It doesn't fucking matter. It still doesn't make me more than one person. I'm still one person, right? I could believe that I'm whatever, right? Some ascendant, whatever. I'm not, I'm just one person. So, eh, it's all good. It's all good, Jay. Let's wrap it. You got a, you got a, you got a Jay trophy for us? Great shit as always. Yeah, this one's short. It's okay. really short. Well, then, wait. Hold off. Let me play you some music and make sure you can hear it, and then we'll, uh, let's do this properly. All right. This is the the uh, infamous J-Tro. Thanks, thank you to everybody out there for hanging out and, uh, and listening and being part of this and all the chat and all all, all the things. Like, uh, by the way, uh, Spotify did a, did a rap, all right, like a yearly rap, and sent me like a thing that said, oh, your year in review, you know, the type of shit they always type, try to do in December. I'm like, I hate these fucking things, but I clicked on it. You know what it said? On Spotify alone, Troubled Minds Radio this year grew 900%. 900%, right? Not 900 followers, 900%. Holy shit. And you know what? That's because of you. If you're out there and you're listening and you're hearing me at any point ever, this is succeeding because of you, because you're putting your thoughtfulness and your energy and your time into this. And I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. A um, lot to be grateful for. Like I said, uh, Thanksgiving is one thing, but uh, being grateful every day is something else entirely. So uh, let's do it. Jay. Here's a uh, play some uh, music for you. Let's GTFO music coming music coming. There you go. Go right ahead, sir. Thanks, Mike. In the universe, there are things that are known and there are things that are unknown. And in between, there are doors. 
It's William Blake. In between, there are doors. I love it. I love it, man. We don't walk through it. We're not going to get there. No, 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 no. There you go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jay, for uh, all the all the uh, Jay Tros. Appreciate that. Look, we're making we're making new terms. We're inventing new words in the English language, and that's what it's all about. I've always been like that when I was young. You guys can probably tell. I'll just make up my own word. I'm like, fuck it. This kind of sounds like it should be a word. Does this make sense? My brother would shake his head and go, no, Mike, no. <laughs> I'm like, well, it made sense to me. Anyway, we're out of here. Thank you, everybody, once again. Like I said, uh, there's a there's a lot going on here and uh the word this is this is a already way larger uh, success than i ever dreamed and uh i have ev- each and every one of you to thank for that if you love this show if you love the time spent if you love all that good stuff you know what to do there's a patreon there's a rock fin there's a there's a twitch you can sub up to if you have a uh, uh, let's say uh, you don't want to kick in the money you don't think it's worth that but you got a little extra time put on an old show on the podcast feed on spotify spotify is growing like crazy uh, listen to that feed, and uh, there's uh, ads built in. And uh, when you're gardening or cooking dinner or uh, barbecuing or whatever, right, doing the dishes, uh, well, there you go. Throw on an old Trouble Wine show you haven't heard because there's some gold back there too. There's some good shit that you probably haven't heard. So thank you so much, each and every one of you. Hats are coming. Sorry to Robert. Had some technical issues. We'll get this worked out. Uh, all the rest of this stuff, I, I don't know. I feel like a politician for saying all the thank yous, but it's all legitimate. I mean it because uh, it's, uh, it is what it is. Jay, let's get the hell out of here. Good night, Mike. Good night, Jay. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Pleasure's mine. Pleasure's mine. All right, let's get the hell out of here. You guys are the best. You know how this ends. Uh, more Trouble Minds tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Pacific. We do it Monday through Thursday at 7. And uh, Patreon show coming up. We'll have that. If you guys want to hang out afterward in the chat, we usually do that as well. So join the Discord at TroubleMinds.org. Click the Discord link. Uh, lots of the familiar faces that you hear on the show, including myself, usually pop in and say hi over there, at least for a little bit from time to time. So join the Discord. Uh, lots of good people hanging out, doing good things. So there there you go. Let's GTFO. You're listening uh, on the podcast feed. No, I already did that. It ends like this. Be sure, be strong, be true. God willing, we'll be tomorrow. God willing, we got tomorrow. Thank you for listening. From our troubled minds to yours, have a great night. <laughs> Let it rip, buddy. <coughs> That's the best I can do, Mike. Ow. That's all right. We're back off the microphone. Piss off the neighbors. Ow. <laughs> all right, guys. Have a good night. <laughs> Catch you later. <laughs> they got it coming. They really do. They yeah. threw a wham bam roll with 750 kids next door. DJ <laughs> on the second floor and everything. Speaker's three feet tall, man. There you go. There you go. I can right, go guys, out there have... and scream at the moon and they can't say nothing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> have a great night, guys. Catch you.